transmitting on the FM 90 band. 90.3 from Peters Rock in St. Andrew and Murphy Hill in St. Anne. Serving Kingston and St. Andrew, St. Catherine, St. Anne, parts of Clarendon, St. Mary and St. Thomas. 90.5 from Huntley in Manchester, transmitting to St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, Manchester, Clarendon, rural St. Andrew and parts of St. Thomas. And 90.7 from Cooper's Hill in St. Andrew and Flower Hill in St. James, serving Westmoreland, Hanover, St. James, sections of Trelawney, Kingston, St. Catherine, Clarendon, St. Mary, Portland and St. Anne. Nationwide 90 FM also broadcasts on the World Wide Web on NationwideRadioJM.com and on Flow on Channel 916. Nationwide 90 FM, a revolution in media. You're listening to Nationwide 90 FM. The time is... It's 6 o'clock. From the studios of Nationwide Radio, morning radio the right way. It's Nationwide This Morning. A very good morning to you. I'm Ricardo Brooks. Coming up in the news at 6 for this morning, Monday, March 25, 2024, the Parliament says the Auditor General's Department must follow the law when submitting reports to the House for tabling. The MP for South Manchester, Robert Chin, says he will visit the Office of the Integrity Commission today. The Jamaica Society for Industrial Security support the latest increase in minimum wage for industrial security guards. Twelve people have been killed in road crashes across the island over the past 13 days. In regional news, the Dominican Republic says it will continue to deport Haitians. In international news, Russia charges four men over Moscow concert attack. In the sports report, Jamaica secured a 1-0 victory over Panama in the third place match of the CONCACAF Nations League finals yesterday. And in business this morning, the EU has announced investigations into some of the world's biggest tech firms in over uncompetitive practices. The details after the break. Get up to a million dollars off everything, everything. With the Mitsubishi million dollars here Price a splash save cash run come catch The Mitsubishi million dollars here Get up to a million dollars off On your brand new Mitsubishi ASX Or for Hero Sport With the Mitsubishi million dollar sale Plus three years warranty Two years free servicing And one year free Amber Tracker Follow us on social media at Mitsubishi JA For more info Hurry up and come get this deal while stocks last Only at Stewart's Automotive Group South Camp Road, Kingston And Iron Shore Bay Supply. Catch the first news of the day. A comprehensive package of local, international, sports, and business news. The news at 6 on Nationwide 90 FM. And now to the details. The Parliament has urged the Auditor General's Department, AGD, to follow the law that governs the treatment of reports before they are submitted to the House of Representatives. Nationwide News understands that this was the basis upon which two reports were recently sent back to the Auditor General's Department by the Clerk of the Houses of Parliament without being tabled. Mahiri Stewart reports. It's understood Parliament sent back the two reports to the AGD after House Speaker Juliet Holness was advised by Parliament's legal counsel that the Department did not comply with a requirement for documents to first be sent to the responsible minister. The correspondence, which was sent on January 8, 2024 by Clerk of the Houses of Parliament Valerie Curtis to Auditor General Pamela Monroe Ellis, said the reports were not sent for tabling in the House in accordance with the provisions of the law. The reports are a special audit of the Financial Services Commission, FSC, and a special audit of Tax Administration Jamaica, TAJ. Section 30 of the Financial Administration and Audit Act, FAAA, says the Auditor General's report on examination and audit of any accounts audited pursuant to subsection 1 shall initially be submitted to the responsible minister for presentation subject to the requirements of the Act. The Act also says the responsible minister, upon receipt of the report, shall obtain the observation of the public body concerned on any matter which has been drawn by the Auditor General in the report and cause such observations to be presented to the House of Representatives together with the report. The Act says if the responsible minister does not, within two months of receiving the report, present it to the House of Representatives, the Auditor General shall transmit a copy of the report 
to the House Speaker to be presented to the House. A similar process for tabling Auditor General audit reports is recommended in Section 13A of the Public Bodies Management and Accountability Act. It's understood that Parliament has taken the position that no individual, agency or department is above the law. It's also understood that as soon as the Auditor General's department observes the provisions of the FAA Act, all reports will be tabled immediately. Mahiri Stewart for Nationwide News. The Member of Parliament for South Manchester, the JLP's Robert Chin, says he intends to visit the Office of the Integrity Commission today to resolve a matter which resulted in him being summoned by the Commission by way of public notice. His statement comes following the IC's notice in the Sunday Gleaner, asking him to report to their offices. The notice, which was circulated widely on social media, indicated that Mr. Chin must visit the Commission's office by Wednesday, March 27. In a statement Sunday afternoon, the Member of Parliament says he has been in touch with the Integrity Commission over the last few months in relation to requested financial statements for companies of which he's a director. He says the requested statements have not yet been completed by the company's accountants and as a result are still outstanding. The South Manchester MP apologized to the Integrity Commission for not providing an update sooner. Director of the Jamaica Society for Industrial Security, JSIS, Major Richard Rees, has thrown his support behind the latest adjustment to the minimum wage for industrial security guards. Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced the increase to the national minimum wage during his contribution to the budget debate last Thursday. Abigail Bartley reports. Effective June 1, the national minimum wage is set to move to $15,000, up from 13000 Industrial security guards will also see an adjustment to their wages from $14,000 to $15,000 per 40-hour work week. Major Reese says while he supports the latest increase to the minimum wage, he's yet to see whether there will be any changes to the insurance benefits for security guards. The JSIS and the security industry as a whole supports improved remuneration for its officers. And although we have not received the detailed narrative or gazette based on the Prime Minister's presentation, we would generally support the increase in terms of their remuneration. We're not, however, informed as to whether there is any change in terms of the premiums that are associated with security officers. Neither are we appraised of any increases in the insurance. So as to impact, we are not in a position yet to determine that until we get those better particulars. Major Reese also notes that unregistered security companies operating across the island are still a cause for concern. We of course know that on the other hand our customers, they would have been still recovering from the increases associated with the court ruling and then the subsequent significant increase in June of the minimum wage last year. But that aside, the issue really is that there are a lot of unregulated or unregistered companies operating island-wide. And we would have hoped that the PSRA and the other government agencies would have, you know, devised a special strategy to address that. Major East says the relevant authorities must now focus on ensuring that illegally operated security companies fall into compliance with the Private Security Regulation Authority Act, PSRA. As you have these increases, you have the illegal operators increasing and the regulators seem to just focus on those who are registered. I guess we are easily identified and we are compliant. So we are hoping that the relevant enforcement arms will focus now on the unregistered entities who would not be compliant with the minimum wage and the other provisions of the Act and, of course, the PSRA Act. Abigail Bartley for Nationwide News. Local Environment Watchdog, the Jamaica Environment Trust Jet, is welcoming the move by the Andrew Holness-led administration to increase the fines for pollution. The Prime Minister had acknowledged in his budget presentation that fines for polluters and, in some cases, rogue developers are in effect. 
Mr. Holness stated in his contribution to the budget debate that under the Natural Resources Conservation Authority, NRCA Act, the ceiling is 50000 for a breach, while under the Wildlife Protection Act, the ceiling is $1.5 million. Under the newly proposed penalties, the fine would be $5 million for individuals and $10 million for a corporate body. Chief Executive Officer of JET, Dr. Teresa Rodriguez Moody, applauded the move to increase the fines but suggested more should be paid by corporate bodies when they pollute the environment. The Jamaica Environment Trust welcomes a move for increased fines. This is indeed something that we've been calling on for many years, and these are promises that have been made for many years as well. So we're happy to see that the fines are going to be increased and significantly increased. The question that some are asking, is it enough? Um, it, I think it could have been higher, especially for corporate bodies, but I think it's a step in the right direction, and it is something that is long overdue. Meanwhile, the JET CEO is raising concerns about the ability of the government to enforce the new penalties. Dr. Rodriguez Moody is questioning whether there are enough human resources at the National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, to go after polluters. Importantly, as we increase fines, what needs to come along with that is enforcement. And so that is something that has been an issue. We've been hearing the National Environmental Planning Agency say that they have issues in the sense of not enough enforcement officers and so forth. So I think it's important that we hear how that will also, how there will also be some changes with regards to enforcement to go hand in hand with the increased fines. Dr. Teresa Rodriguez Moody, the CEO of JET, and of course those fines relate specifically to the pollution of the Rio Cobre. Meanwhile, JET is also in support of the proposed ban on the release of effluent into the Rio Cobre in St. Catherine. This was another move announced by Prime Minister Holness during his budget presentation. However, while JET is supporting the policy, Dr. Rodriguez Moody is questioning how the move will be enforced. It's a good move, but the Rio Cobre and its tributaries is massive. So it begs the question, how will this be done if we already have a challenge enforcing the existing situation, the existing organizations that are allowed to discharge? How will this be managed? How will enforcement take place? So while it is again a step in the right direction, there is the question of how we're going to manage this. But additionally, the Rio Cobre is only one import, one river and it's yes it is an, is an important watershed but what about our other rivers what about our other important watershed we shouldn't just be reacting to the issue of the, the rear cobra just because of the repeated incidents of pollution dr teresa rodriguez moody the ceo of jet now 12 people have been killed in road crashes across the island over the past 13 days. The latest fatality occurred on Sunday after a man succumbed to injuries he received in a two-vehicle collision on the Winston Jones Highway in Manchester. His identity has not yet been released. According to the Island Traffic Authority, ITA, between March 12 and Saturday, March 22, 11 people died in road collisions. The youngest victim was a six-year-old boy who died from injuries sustained in a crash at Mountainside, St. Elizabeth, last Thursday. The fatalities have pushed the number of lives lost since the start of the year to 93. That's eight fewer than the 101 recorded over the corresponding period last year. The authority also recorded an 8% decline in road crashes since January. Pedestrians account for 18% of road users killed. Motorcyclists make up the majority of fatalities with 40%. The Island Traffic Authority says the leading cause for road fatalities continues to be excessive speed with no regard for road conditions. St. Elizabeth registered the most road fatalities with 12. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, says it has taken note of the contrasting version of events that led to the fatal shooting of two men by the police on Saturday along Terminal Road in Old Harbour, St. Catherine. 23-year-old tradesman Adri Bailey and 21-year-old Daniel McKenzie died after they were shot during an alleged confrontation with the police. Two firearms, a 9mm Beretta pistol and one homemade handgun were reportedly recovered during the incident. Commissioner of Indicom Hugh Faulkner says his organization has not only noted the claims of residents, but a team will be dispatched to engage the relatives of the deceased. Protesting residents and the security forces have given contrasting reports. 
the security forces report a firearm confrontation with armed men and the recovery of two firearms following the exchange. Residents, on the other hand, challenge the account given by law enforcement officers and deem the action by the security forces unlawful. In addition to the investigative steps we have taken and are taking, Indicom's family liaison officer will be making contact with the family members of both Mr. Bailey and Mr. McKenzie. A central feature of the investigations will be whether body-worn cameras were rather whether the officers were wearing body-worn cameras during the alleged confrontation. According to Mr. Faulkner of the 55 cases now before the courts involving members of the police, no body-worn camera footage was available. Following an Indicom investigation, a commission's report is produced and submitted to the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions for a ruling. In cases where the ODPP rules that a charge be proffered, the officers are placed before the court. Currently, there are 55 matters in court arising from investigations carried out by Indicom. So far, no evidence of body-worn cameras being utilized have been determined. Hugh Faulkner there, the Commissioner of the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom. That's the local segment of the news. Up next, regional and international. Yes, me get the last cheese. Says to be brothers and sisters. At the end of Easter service, we have cheese. Says to be but one day we get no bun and cheese. Taste the beat, serve, sell me some bun and cheese. Taste the beat. Why this look nice with some tasty cheese? Taste the beat. Could I have some cheese, please? Taste the beat. Make we get on real bad with the tasty cheese, boy. Taste the beat with the tasty, tasty cheese. In regional news, the President of the Dominican Republic, Luis Abineda, has declared that his country will continue to expel Haitians that will not authorize refugee, rather, and will not authorize refugee camps. International organizations have demanded that the Dominican Republic stop expelling Haitians currently in the country and welcome those fleeing the violence. But speaking in a recent interview, President Abineda said his administration will continue to develop and enforce laws related to migration. He said the United Nations must act more. He said the international community cannot ask the Dominican Republic to solve the Haitian problem because his country will not and cannot do it. The president said there are many alternatives that do not include the Dominican Republic, which shares the island of Hispaniola with Haiti. Further afield, Russia has charged four men, it says, attacked a Moscow concert hall and killed at least 137 people. All four appear to have been beaten and one was brought to court in a wheelchair. They were charged with committing an act of terrorism. The Islamic State group, IS, said it carried out Friday's outrage at the hall and posted video evidence. Russian... Officials have claimed, without evidence, Ukrainian involvement. Kiev says the claim is absurd. The graphic video released by IS shows attackers firing on the crowd inside the concert hall. However, no Russian official has acknowledged the claim, and Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said in a news conference on Monday that it was inappropriate to comment on it until the investigation had been completed. He also said that because of the tense international situation, there was little collaboration between countries on fighting terrorism. France has raised its terror alert to the highest level, with President Emmanuel Macron saying on Monday that the Islamic State group behind the Moscow attack had also recently been targeting France. Rescuers are continuing to search the rubble of the concert hall for victims, and regional officials said the operation would carry on through Tuesday afternoon. That's regional and international news. Up next, sports. Every day in a busy world, we have to do so much. Bank with CIBC and get that personal touch. Share your ambitions, let us help your dreams come true At CIBC, you're at the heart of all we do We're on your side, we're listening We know the way you feel CIBC, ambitions made real 
Have you ever been to a store and felt right at home? The minute you entered, you knew that's where you were meant to be. Picture it. The dedicated warm staff greet you with a smile, show exceptional professionalism and still make you feel like family. Everything is catered to you. You know you're getting the best because to them, you're the best. That's the New Walters Pharmacy, 18 High Street, Black River. Call 965-2264 or 476-3939. The New Walters Pharmacy. Pharmacy, everything exceptional. Ooh la la. I see what I want at Fast Rate Super Sale, March 18 to 28. Visit us in Kingston, Mandeville, and Montego Bay. Come get your wires, breakers, chandeliers, flood lamps, LED bulbs, and so much more. You can't afford to miss it. Come shop. Come save at Fast Rate Super Sale, March 18 to 28. See you there at Fast Rate. Open Sundays. <laughs> In your sports report this morning, Reggae Boys defender Dexter Lambikisa's half first half goal fired Jamaica to a 1-0 victory over Panama in the third place match of the CONCACAF Nations League finals at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas on Sunday. Ball down the right side, step overs, and the strike! What a hit! Opening goal for Jamaica, the Reggae Boys take the lead in this third place match. With the victory, Jamaica becomes the first team from the Caribbean in history to finish on the podium in the CONCACAF Nations League finals. It's Jamaica's fourth win against Panama in history and the first since the quarterfinals of the 2019 CONCACAF Gold Cup. Mount Pleasant Academy extended their lead atop the table following their 2-0 win over Arnett Gardens in the second match of a doubleheader in the Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League at Draxall Complex on Sunday. Daniel Green and Okasa Chung were the goal scorers. Meanwhile, Damian Thomas scored in the 90th minute to give Vare United a 1-0 win over Portmore United in the first match. In the other results, Cavalier moved up to the second place following their 5-0 whipping of Treasure Beach. Waterhouse Edge done beholden 1 0, and Montego Bay United came from behind to clip 10 man Malines United to 1. Sprint Queen Elaine Thompson Hira says she remains hungry to defend her Olympic titles and break the world records over 100 and 200 meters. Thompson Hira clinched the 100 and 200 meters gold at back to back Olympics, a feat she achieved in Rio de Janeiro and Tokyo. Her personal best of 10.54 seconds makes her the fastest woman alive in the 100 meters and her 21.53 seconds makes her the third fastest alive in the 200 meters. Speaking on Citius Mag, the 31-year-old says she wants to further rewrite the record book by becoming the first woman to win the sprint double at three straight Olympic Games. I feel good, you know, I've just maintained that, you know, it's like when you have a car, you have to... You have to service the car, so my duty is to make sure that my body is fine tuned and serviced and always ready for the go. And you know, the key focus is just always to stay healthy. I don't think it matters about the time right now, it matters about you getting each races and to stay fit and healthy. And once I have that, you know, the time will come after. But you know, definitely the aim is always to try to break a world record, defend my title. But my focus right now is to just stay fit, stay healthy, take it race by race, season by season. Thompson Hira says her inner confidence is what keeps her motivated. The mindset is have to be strong, it have to be positive. You know, you push out those negative thoughts, replace them with positive. You know, you have to always be strong and stay focused. For me, it's all about getting my workout done each day. Once I complete my workout, I just hallelujah to Christ. You know, I'm happy that I can complete that. And the focus for me is not to be over underconfident but to always be confident and the key word that i walk with every day is to just believe in myself elaine thompson hero two-time olympic relay gold medalist johan blake has revealed that the paris olympics will be his last summer games blake won gold in the sprint relay at the 2012 olympics in london and the rio de janeiro games in 2016. he also won silver in the 100 and 200 meters at the 2012 games Blake says he's putting in the hard work to ensure he closes his Olympics on a high. 
I try to stay as prudent as possible, you know. For my Olympics, I'm, I'm going 708 billion percent. If you watch my Instagram, I'm, I've been working, I've been going hard. I've been inviting people into my training space just to see my mindset um, behind how I'm going about this sports 2024. Blake, who hopes to represent the country at his fourth Olympics, says he has been inviting his fans into his training space. Knowing that it's your, it's your fourth Olympics and mm. the journey has been um, magnitude yeah. and um, it has been great, it's bittersweet and you just want everyone to see that it's not just glitter. There's a lot of work go behind what I'm doing and there's a lot of dedication. So uh, for preparing for this, um, it's not easy. Johan Blake there, wrapping up the morning sports. Know your numbers and take control. from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. In business this morning, the EU has announced investi investigations into some of the biggest tech firms in the world over uncompetitive practices. Alphabet, which owns Google, Meta and Apple, are all being looked into for potential breaches of the Digital Markets Act introduced in 2022. If they are found to have broken the rules, the firms can face huge fines of up to 10% of their annual turnover. The EU antitrust boss announced investigations on Monday. It comes three weeks after the EU fined Apple £1.5 billion for breaking competition laws over music streaming. Meanwhile, the United States accused Apple of monopolizing the smartphone market in a landmark lawsuit against the tech giant introduced last week. In its investigation announced today, the EU says it believes Apple and Alphabet are limiting anti-steering. This means they're making it difficult for apps to tell users about ways to pay less for their services outside of, uh, outside of using App Store's own payment methods. In the United Kingdom, a new report says the number of people leaving the workforce due to long-term sickness is at its highest since the 1990s. The Resolution Foundation says adults economically inactive due to ill health rose from 2.1 million in July 2019 to a peak of 2.8 million in October of 2023. It's the longest sustained rise since 1994 to 1998 when the records began. The government said its recent budget measures are estimated to boost the labor force by 300,000 workers. The foundation's report comes after data revealed more than a fifth of UK adults were not looking for work. People at either end of the age spectrum had the highest proportion of those out of work due to ongoing illness. The rise in long-term sickness leaves the UK as the only G7 economy not to have returned to its pre-pandemic employment rate, according to the foundation. In foreign exchange trading this morning, the Jamaican dollar will open trading, selling for an average $154.58 against the benchmark U.S. dollar. The Jamaican will open trading this morning, selling for an average $115.94 against the Canadian. And finally, the Jamaican dollar will open trading this morning, selling for an average $197.91 against the British pound. That's business this morning. For all your musical needs, visit the Music Mart, the most complete music store in Jamaica. Telephone 876-960-7712. The time brought to you by the Music Mart is...
It's 6.30. Accelerate your career with the right ally. Mono School of Business and Management. Explore our suite of highly ranked, specialized, globally competitive graduate degrees, including our internationally accredited MBA program. At MSBM, we nurture critical thinkers and innovative leaders, placing our graduates in a league of their own. Join the community of trailblazers making an impact at home and abroad. Apply online today. Global Knowledge, Regional Solutions. Importers, the Jamaica Customs Agency is revolutionizing your clearance experience as our contactless clearance process becomes mandatory on April 2, 2024. This process will facilitate the clearance of all non-commercial personal shipments at our seaports with a CIF value of less than $5,000 being inspected by customs without you or your agent present. You're encouraged to make your payments using our customs mobile app, JA Customs Connect. Fees payable to your shipping agent and warehouse operator remain applicable. For further information, contact your freight forwarder or email. Email contactlessclearance at jca.gov.jm or call 876-922-5140-8. The JCA's contactless clearance process is convenient, efficient, and secure. Jamaica Customs, keeping our customers in focus. Does your bra light up your back? Do your shoulders hurt from carrying the weight of your breasts? These are signs of an ill-fitting bra. When was the last time you were fitted by a bra fit specialist? The bra experts at La Belle Femme will take care of you. Drop into the store at 53 Lady Musgrave Road, Tuesdays to Saturdays from 10 to 5, and you will see the difference. Or call 876-622-6091. We're welcoming every woman with a special International Women's Day offer at Sajikor Bank. Women who apply for a Sajikor Bank credit card get 5,000 bonus points with a qualifying purchase within 30 days. That's not all. Apply for a car loan or mortgage and Sajikor Bank will welcome you with a reduction in your commitment fee. At Sajikor Bank, we want every woman to feel welcome. Conditions apply. When you are willing to serve, 
We have room to observe To see if you can walk the walk you took Let me give you my word My voice must be heard Bravery is a piece of my heart Call me by my name I am ready to roam Once the rules remain the same Now the story is untold Don't you ever have doubt that we'll be here with you on a Monday morning at this hour? It, it worked. It worked. It worked. No, no. I, I'm giving it to you. I'm ah, just saying. Thank you. I, I, is that all? Is that nah? Okay. It's not one of those happy ones. Ah. Uh, Anyhow, 6.35 in the morning, this 25th day of March 2024. You're tuned into Nationwide this morning. I'm Ricardo Brooks. I'm Said Bernard. Good morning, Council. Good morning, Ricky. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I like your cufflinks. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. Morning, Mr. King. Morning to our friends on YouTube. Morning to you if you're out there in Radio Land. And hello to you if you're joining us on the app. Uh, good morning. I know this is probably going to make you upset, Mr. King, but you don't have to... Tell the KC supporters good morning and congratulations. Oh my God! I mean, no, that's, that's no, that's, that's no, no, that's appropriate. No, no, Ricardo. That's appropriate. No, this is not a champ show. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> a regular thing. <laughs> a regular thing. <laughs> congratulations uh, to Kingston College and sport. to yeah, yeah. Edwin Allen. Congrats, yeah. yeah. Congrats to KC and Edwin Allen. Yeah, yeah. 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 If you had no very much, you know, the name was the name was right across me there. They're, they're making their way to be one of the prestigious institutions. Oh, in they're March. making their way. They're making their way. Well. And, you know, as the father institution of Kingston College, uh -huh. uh, it's, it's, as, it's as if you're looking at a, a son and you're proud. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see. You know, I, I, I must say, though, I must say, though, uh, St. George's College. Mm. I would add. St. George's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. St. <laughs> George's College yeah. uh, came eighth. Mm. In the in the champs as well, top yes. ten, okay. and that's first in a long time. That's, that's what you call yeah. snatching the. Trying to buy it from the jaws of the. Trying to buy it. Okay, all right, well done. But at eighth, no one. We, 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 we certificate we of participation. No one is a is a, is a very important certificate <laughs> of participation see. because this one shows that we're we're making some improvements. Okay. You know, yeah, congrats, yeah, congrats, yeah. congrats. Yeah. Make up my school every and, time. And congrats to all the athletes, the young athletes who participated at champs. It's been a very busy weekend. I saw quite an unusual notice mm -hmm. from the Integrity yeah, Commission yeah. summoning um, the JLP's Robert Chin. Mm -hmm. yeah, trying to find him. And I thought to myself, an MP is hard to find? He was at Parliament on I said Thursday. On Thursday, he was in Parliament reading, uh, the, reading the prayer, was it? Yeah, Saying the prayer, yeah. 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 But any home. I said this much, Ricardo. Mm -hmm. uh, usually, with legislation, I find in Jamaica, generally, I'm not speaking specifically to right. this, but it may very well be the case that when it is that you have not gotten a response, mm. the law requires that you just cover all your bases by advertising. You put it out there. So at the end of the day, yeah. the person cannot say that you did not take all means and measures to ensure that they were advised. Fair. Yeah. Mr. Chin says he will visit the offices of the Integrity Top Commission of the today. <laughs> Uh, and he apologized to the Integrity Commission. I also see notices being circulated in social media. Those are which, false. Yes, which are purporting that members of the People's National Party, M MPs from the People's National Party side of the, the parliament, have been summoned by the Integrity Commission. Those are false. It's not true. The Integrity Commission actually released last night uh, a statement on that. It says, the Integrity Commission wishes to advise that false representations about named Jamaican MPs are being circulated as official IC notices. It says the only genuine public notice is that which was published in, it, it says today, is that yes, that's yesterday's Gleaner and the Observer newspaper. Mm -hmm. So those who are mischievous and just trying to cause problems. I also saw, saw some, um, as it relates to... Are circulating those false from um, the jail notices. Yeah, they're totally false. In fact, yeah, they, that's the one for Juliet Holness as well. And the Prime yeah. Minister as yes. well. So not but true. The IC said the only one, or the only true ones are the ones that were actually published in the cleaner yes. and the observer. And that's related to Robert Chin, yeah. who says he will be at the offices top of the morning today, this morning. On my mind this morning, I started hosting this show in December 
of 2021. An unexpected vacancy arose and I can still vividly recall the Saturday afternoon that call from Cliff Hughes telling me the time had come for me to become an on-air talent. Now up to that point, my most significant assignment here at Nationwide had been presenting the afternoon newscast at 5 o'clock. I remember accepting the assignment to host this show with significant trepidation and doubt. My first day on air here was hell. The YouTubers were critical and some were downright mean-spirited. Yeah? They wanted me gone. They wanted the previous hosts back. And it wasn't easy to read those comments, but I steeled myself and determined in my mind that I would give this job my very best and my all every single morning. I've endeavored to do that. And it's for you, the listeners, to determine whether my best was good enough. And so it's been two years and three months since I started this journey hosting this show and interacting with you in the mornings. And with all great journeys, there comes a time that they come to an end. And one takes a different path. And so listeners, my journey on Nationwide this morning, the big show, has come to an end. My last show here will be on Wednesday of this week. And come April 1, I will move to Nationwide at 5, alongside Cliff Hughes and Chevron Campbell. George Davis will replace me here in the mornings. And I'll, I'll miss Tana, Saeed, King, and Michelle dearly. And the way the shifts are structured now means I won't get to interact with them as much going forward. This team has been like a family to me, truly. And so NTM will always feel like home to me. Uh, the team took a chance on me and gave me the biggest platform of my life. And I'm forever grateful for everyone who believed I could do it and poured into me. Still, I'm hoping, listeners, you'll join me on Nationwide at 5, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, starting next week. I expect the same robust discussions, the same sparring when time comes for calls, and I expect to give of my very best in the evenings as I have in the mornings. It's been an awesome privilege traveling with you to work and to school in the mornings, and I look forward to taking you home now in the afternoons and the evenings. Now, I know Nationwide this morning will continue to be the number one current affairs morning show, no doubt in my mind. I'll miss it. Because I won big show. And I'll never forget that. Yeah? That's what's on my mind this morning. It's this morning on Nationwide 90 FM. The time is 17 minutes to 7 o'clock. Go crazy for this offer from Flo. Get a free Samsung phone and earbuds when you sign up for Flo Yard and Road for the special price of $4,999 plus GCT. Free is all the craze. This crazy offer won't last long. Visit discoverflow.co or your nearest Flo store for more info. Conditions apply. The National Solid Waste Management Authority's mobile application was launched on June 5, 2020 to facilitate digital reports of littering in public spaces and illegal dumping. Since then, there have been more than 2,000 app downloads and more than 1,500 reports. Mikhail Graham, a teacher by profession, shares his experience with the app. I believe that majority of individuals can use it regardless of age or limited knowledge of internet or technology. It was quite easy to navigate as you had the different options for you to fill in your name, email address, number. 
and a part for it to include what the status was like and out of 10 generally it would be like a 9 out of 10 in terms of user friendly you can download the nswma app by visiting the google play store or the ios apple store and typing in nswma a message brought to you by the ministry of local government and community development Every day in a busy world, we have to do so much. Bank of CIBC, and get that personal touch. Share your ambitions, let us help your dreams come true. At CIBC, you're at the heart of all we do. We're on your side, we're listening, we know the way you feel. CIBC, ambitions made real. Mommy, what are you sneaking and eating? <laughs> you catch me. That's not the mother's Easter bun you promised me, is it? No. Well, yes. Well, I was preparing it for you for tomorrow. And I could drop off. You call them two slice liquor, mommy? <laughs> you catch me. Shouldn't you be asleep? With all the noise, mommy, I need some mother's Easter bun before I go back to bed. Winner of the 2023 King of Buns Easter bun contest. Mother's Easter bun is baked to perfection. A so bun for nice. Can I get another slice? Mother's Easter bun. Grab one before them, don't. More deliciousness. More deliciousness. From Mother's Bakery. Street Smart and the JUTC Morning Commute is brought to you by JUTC, your route to excellence, and the Road Safety Unit in the Island Traffic Authority. Fifteen minutes going up to seven o'clock, and it's time for Street Smart with Ludlow McLean. Good morning, Ludlow. Good morning. <coughs> is that is that Said? Yes, sir. Morning, sir. Morning. Morning, Ricardo. Boy, <laughs> listen to Ricardo. Morning, morning Ludlow. I tell you, boy. <coughs> boy, your journey. Tell you. Uh, by the way, did you hear, hear anything about the eclipse of the moon this morning at three? No. No. Huh? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I don't know. And then I may draw snow in Ludlow. <coughs> okay, okay. I also wanted to get up and notice it, but I, oh. I wasn't. But I haven't heard anybody said anything. But uh, I wish you all the best on the NNN at five. Nationwide really at five, you know. We got to buck up on some other star words who come on to that program in the evening. So I, may, know may, I don't know. Maybe we need a, Maybe we, st we should start getting a traffic report in the <laughs> afternoon. I'll <laughs> quick update yeah. to what's going on. Yeah. Now. Um, those of you on the east, you don't have much of a problem right now. Those of you along, we know they are going out to... The that that area they call Victoria Avenue and that's between Winnow Road and East Queen Street, and going up uh, South Camp, uh, it's pretty good going, and uh, going further beyond, going past North Street, uh, Glenmuir Road, uh, Dean uh, Miran Road, going all the way up here, it's pretty good going as you make your way into cross. So they're on Caledona, steady flow, no problems, no delays there, and coming from the Tamrecom area in both directions, it's pretty good going. Arthur Wins, both directions, no problems. Oxford Road, going all the way across to old, uh, from Olo Proid End, going across to Apache Road. It's pretty good movement in both directions. If you make your way up North Foot Boulevard, you have no problem. It's pretty good going also. But I'm sure in a few minutes from now, it's going to build, like, for example, the, the traffic coming from, like, the Mandela heading into Boulevard. Those are the signs that are uh, available to us now. But so far... Pretty good going on that end. So until about seven eighteen, it's back to you in the studios. Thank you so much, Ludlow. That's Street Smart. Up next, your word of the day. Street Smart and the JUTC Morning Commute was brought to you by JUTC, your route to excellence, and the road safety unit in the Island Traffic Authority. Your word of the day. Okay, it's an interesting one. It's a verb and it's spelled B E D I Z E N. Do you say Z or Z? Z. Z? Okay. Man, it felt weird coming out of the ago. B E D I Z E N. B E D I Z E N. Bedizen. 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 Bedizen, a verb, it means to address or adorn in a showy, gaudy, 
or tasteless manner and it came into english around about 1655 yeah uh, it comes from the verb dizen to deck with clothes or finery and let's see how they use it in a sentence the attendees had bedizened themselves for the midnight release of the new fantasy film the children love to use their parents old costume jewelry to bedizen themselves yeah your word of the day bedizen a verb to dress or adorn in showy gaudy or tasteless in a in a showy gaudy or tasteless manner yeah bedizen when's the last time you went to jams high school literally mm. yeah i i because some people sustain that excitement. Well, I suppose it's it's yeah, yeah, just love on their school. Yeah, and and the sport. A lot of people really love the, the sport. Yeah, I haven't been there in years. You see the whole marching bit. I did it once. <laughs> so it was hot. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, this is not worth it. It was on a Friday. You used to march yeah, on a Friday. Yeah, yeah. So school mm-hmm. did end. Yeah, well, my experience was didn't end school early. Right. But like two o'clock, yeah. we'd end school. Oh like, really? Oh I mean, wow! We got little little about midday. I mean, camping over little little about midday. Serious business. Which midday? <laughs> he got to the state all day on the Friday, <laughs> like one hour early. So right. you come out like two o'clock, one right. forty there about, and they would march up okay. from North Street to Stadium. Yeah, yeah. King used to march to Stadium. From Calabar, you would never have a choice. It's a walk that way, though. Know? It's a piece of walk. From radios. <laughs> We go to the tech or the tech water, 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 water yes, up and then walk guess, out. Or they that's could go fire, you know? down. That's actually far. Yes, that's quite a walk, man. They must do all the water, loo, then Trafalgar. Yes. And I'm still not reaching up. That's, <laughs> then go all the length of Trafalgar, right. then yeah. go round. Yeah, that's quite yeah. a walk. This is a walk. Hmm. No, sir. I don't know if I walk that far. Probably that drive off the way and then we reach half the minute. We'll come out and go, go watch me. I'll go watch it. I'll come out. I would take taxi go there. <laughs> <laughs> so you used to walk? You used to walk from Riddles? That's quite that's, that's quite a, a that's distance. Crazy. Yeah, that's, that's quite crazy. a distance. The downtown part never bad. Yeah, because that's yeah. That's short. That one straight walk. But that one there? But I never do it. But anyways. And did you did you prefer the bleachers or the grandstand? <laughs> Always grandstand. Mm-mm. A lot has changed about champs, you know. You know, so I, I used to, I don't know, but it wasn't just about the sun for me. I was afraid of the bleachers because of the buckling. Oh yeah, they stopped doing that. Yeah, which yeah. is good. Yeah, but that could that in my time that would just randomly break out for no reason. It was a part of the tradition of, of just buckle, of just throw buckle. Yes, yeah. I, yeah, I, well, I, I, I was quite. It's coming from far, you know, I remember mm. when me used to even afraid for God champs itself. Because yes. the stabbing the and... The Peace for uh, Champs yeah, initiative man. was very successful. Very yeah, I successful. I do remember that. People yeah, man. get jumped in halfway jumped tree in halfway if you're tree. wearing your tie or yeah, your crest or... I, I remember during... Jo- and, and again, I was like, no, but George is not even a big rival in Champs. Mm. Why not trouble we? <laughs> I remember, I think it was second or third form, yeah. a friend of mine had to do brain surgery because somebody did use a T-square and lick him in the head. Oh, my. From the school opposite. I'm glad those you things know? no longer attend to the championship. The piece of champs thing was, was successful. Yes, because I remember the, the head prefix, you know, yeah. would always do a video right. urging peace. And, yeah, man. Yeah. And we'd go to the different schools right. in our uniforms, have the devotions. That was an excellent strategy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. Was it, I, I'm trying to remember if it was Issa led. Was it Issa led? I think so, you know. Yeah. I think so. Could be wrong, but I think so. Yeah, that was a good, good move to get the violence out of the championships. But I know JCF was. No, I think it was JCF led actually. It was JCF. Okay. No, it's JCF led. Yeah, okay. it's JCF led. Yeah. But that was good. That was good, and I'm glad that those the things peace no and community safety branch. Branch, yeah. Like that, I think those yeah. things no longer happen. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, Mr. King, we go to the features now, and at the top of the hour, the news. Living well is brought to you by the New Walters Pharmacy, Black River, Saint Elizabeth. Everything exceptional. Today on Living Well, what are those ingredients? As you are being told to read food labels lately, understanding what some of the ingredients are and what they are made from would help. I'm going to shout aloud again. If the ingredients are not natural, do not eat it. Let's look at 16 ingredients commonly found in processed foods. 
Then you can decide if you think it should be in your body. Keep in mind that foods made in the United States do not have to tell the consumer everything that is on the food item. So to quote from a well-known fellow, that means there are many unknowns. Here are the ingredients. Carmine, basically anything with red coloring containing ground up carmine fill abdomens from bugs that are most likely killed by immersion in hot water. L-cysteine, often found in mass produced bread products. This is actually an amino acid collected from either duck feathers or human hair. Isinglass, made from dried fish bladders, this ingredient gives beer its golden hue. Rennet, aka calf stomach. This stuff is used to make cheese. Coal tar, number 199 on the United Nations list of most dangerous goods. It was once a very common source of red food coloring. Sorbitol, a sugar alcohol used in medicines, gums, mouthwash, and even cigarettes. Sorbitol is actually a laxative when consumed in large quantities. Phosphoric acid, the same substance that gives soda its acidity, is also used to remove rust in power fuel cells. Polydimethylene siloxane, aside from being a relatively common food additive, other places that you'll find it include dry cleaning solutions, silly putty, and head lice treatments. Xanthan gum, found in dairy products and sauces and salad dressing. This is basically the same bacteria that eat rotting vegetables. Gelatin, used in a number of sweets and jello products. Gelatin is about 50% boiled pig skin and 25% cow bones. Potassium bromate, Normally used to enhance flavor, this category 2B carcinogen may be hard to find outside the United States. The EU, Brazil, Nigeria, Peru, and even China have banned it. MSG. While most people know there is MSG in their Chinese takeout, they don't know why. It's actually there to enhance flavor. MSG does have flavor of its own as well. It is known as umani, and interestingly enough, it has been claimed to be the fifth major taste sweet sour, salty, and bitter, and the other four. Calcium triphosphate, a fancy word for bone char, which is basically the ashes of burned animals. It is often used to fill or sugar. Shellac, nearly every candy with a shiny outer layer is covered in the refined secretions of Caria laca insects, otherwise known as shellac. Of course, most people are probably familiar with its use in nail polish and cosmetics. Polysorbate 60, sometimes used as a substitute for dairy products in baked goods. This substance doesn't spoil. Think about that for a second. Not even bacteria wants to touch it. Castoreum, collected from the secretions of a beaver's anal gland, the substance is quite often used in vanilla ice cream. So, there you have it. How is that for food? Yum! Educate yourself and be diligent. You are what you eat, and you will also become what you eat. That's Living Well for today. Tune in next time for The Dangers of Not Getting Enough Sleep. Living Well was brought to you by the New Walters Pharmacy, Black River, St. Elizabeth. Everything exceptional. Fearless and fair. Nationwide 90 FM. I know everyone appreciates them. It beats standing in bank lines when you want to conduct some simple transactions. ATM machines are useful, but we have to be very careful when using them and also be courteous to others. I'm Tana, and it's time for your lifestyle pages. When you approach an ATM that is currently being used, respect the individual's personal space and stand at a countable distance away. Don't look over someone's shoulder as you wait on the person ahead of you to finish their transaction. And don't look at the ATM screen. Before you approach the ATM, have your card in hand. This is especially important on busy days. You don't want to keep others waiting while you dig around your handbag or pockets for your card. Keep the number of transactions to three or less. If you have a large number of transactions to conduct, consider going into the bank. Step away from the ATM immediately after you finish your transaction. Don't hang around the machine when there are people standing in line waiting. 
If you're using an ATM in a location that has a secure kiosk that requires a card to enter, don't let the next person in with your card. The security system is in place for the safety of all the bank's customers. Always take your receipt with you. Someone may see your last transaction and target you. I'm Tana. Catch you next time for Lifestyle Pages. Nationwide 90 FM, continuing the tradition of fair, fearless, and factual reporting. Help someone today. One act of kindness can go a far way. The time by the Jamaica Information Service is... It's news time, 7 o'clock. If you need to build it, plumb it, weld it, pave it, or power it, National Supply has it. Get the best brands for the job at Jamaica's Industrial Hardware Superstore. Kingston Normal Day. The temperature by National Supply is... It's 26 degrees Celsius here in Kingston, 25 out west in Montego Bay. The most credible news in the morning. The news at 7 on Nationwide 90 FM. A very good morning to you. I'm Ricardo Brooks. Coming up in the news at 7 for this morning, Monday, March 25, 2024. Parliament says the Auditor General's Department must follow the law when submitting reports to the House for tabling. The Member of Parliament for South Manchester, Robert Chin, says he intends to visit the Office of the Integrity Commission today after being publicly summoned. The Jamaica Society for Industrial Security supports the latest increase in the minimum wage for industrial security guards. Twelve people have been killed in road crashes across the island over the past 13 days. In international news, the deadline looms in Trump's $464 million fraud case. The details after the break. If it's news, it's got to be Nationwide 90 FM. And now to the details. The Parliament has urged the Auditor General's Department to follow the law that governs the treatment of reports before they are submitted to the House of Representatives for tabling. Nationwide News understands that this was the basis upon which two reports were recently sent back to the Auditor General's Department by the Clerk of the Houses of Parliament without being tabled. Mahiri Stewart reports. It's understood Parliament sent back the two reports to the AGD after House Speaker Juliet Holness was advised by Parliament's legal counsel that the Department did not comply with a requirement for documents to first be sent to the responsible minister. The correspondence, which was sent on January 8, 2024 by Clerk of the Houses of Parliament Valerie Curtis to Auditor General Pamela Monroe Ellis, said the reports were not sent for tabling in the House in accordance with the provisions of the law. The reports are a special audit of the Financial Services Commission, FSC, and a special audit of Tax Administration Jamaica, TAJ. Section 30 of the Financial Administration and Audit Act, FAAA, says the Auditor General's report on examination and audit of any accounts audited pursuant to subsection 1 shall initially be submitted to the responsible minister for presentation subject to the requirements of the Act. The Act also says the responsible minister, upon receipt of the report, shall obtain the observation of the public body concerned on any matter which has been drawn by the Auditor General in the report and cause such observations to be presented to the House of Representatives together with the report. The Act says if the responsible minister does not, within two months of receiving the report, present it to the House of Representatives, the Auditor General shall transmit a copy of the report to the House Speaker to be presented to the House. A similar process for tabling Auditor General audit reports is recommended in Section 13A of the Public Bodies Management and Accountability Act. It's understood that Parliament has taken the position that no individual, agency or department is above the law. It's also understood that as soon as the Auditor General's Department observes the provisions of the FAA Act, all reports will be tabled immediately. Mahiri Stewart for Nationwide News. 
Member of Parliament for South Manchester, the GLP's Robert Chin, says he intends to visit the Office of the Integrity Commission today to resolve a matter which resulted in him being publicly summoned by the Commission. His statement comes following the IC's notice in the newspapers asking him to report to the office. The notice, which was circulated widely on social media, indicated that Mr. Chin must visit the Commission's office by Wednesday, March 27. In a statement, the Member of Parliament says he has been in touch with the Integrity Commission over the last few months in relation to requested financial statements for companies of which he's a director. He says the requested statements have not yet been completed by the company's accountants and as a result are still outstanding. The South Manchester MP apologised to the Commission for not providing an update sooner. Director of the Jamaica Society for Industrial Security, JSIS, Major Richard Reese, has thrown his support behind the latest adjustment to the minimum wage for industrial security guards. Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced the increase to the national minimum wage during his contribution to the budget debate last Thursday. Abigail Bartley reports. Effective June 1, the national minimum wage is set to move to $15,000, up from 13000 Industrial security guards will also see an adjustment to their wages from $14,000 to $15,000 per 40-hour work week. Major Reese says while he supports the latest increase to the minimum wage, he's yet to see whether there will be any changes to the insurance benefits for security guards. The JSIS and the security industry as a whole supports improved remuneration for its officers. And although we have not received the detailed narrative or gazette based on the Prime Minister's presentation, we would generally support the increase in terms of their remuneration. We're not, however, informed as to whether there is any change in terms of the premiums that are associated with security officers. Neither are we appraised of any increases in the insurance. So as to impact, we are not in a position yet to determine that until we get those better particulars. Major East also notes that unregistered security companies operating across the island are still a cause for concern. We of course know that on the other hand of our customers, they would have been still recovering from the increases associated with the court ruling and then the subsequent significant increase in June of the minimum wage last year. But that aside, the issue really is that there are a lot of unregulated or unregistered companies operating island-wide. And we would have hoped that the PSRA and the other government agencies would have, you know, devised a special strategy to address that. Major East says the relevant authorities must now focus on ensuring that illegally operated security companies fall into compliance with the Private Security Regulation Authority Act, PSRA. As you have these increases, you have the illegal operators increasing and the regulators seem to just focus on those who are registered. I guess we are easily identified and we are compliant. So we are hoping that the relevant enforcement arms will focus now on the unregistered entities who would not be compliant with the minimum wage and the other provisions of the Act and, of course, the PSRA Act. Abigail Bartley for Nationwide News. Local Environment Watchdog, the Jamaica Environment Trust Jet, is welcoming the move by the government to increase the fines for environmental pollution. During his contribution to the budget debate on Thursday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness acknowledged that fines for polluters and, in some cases, rogue developers are ineffective. Mr. Holness pointed out that under the Natural Resources Conservation Authority, NRCA Act, the ceiling is $50,000 for a breach, while under the Wildlife Protection Act, the ceiling is $1.5 million. Under the newly proposed penalties, the fine would be $5 million for individuals and $10 million for a corporate body. The Chief Executive Officer of JET, Dr. Teresa Rodriguez-Moody, has applauded the move to increase the fines. 
The Jamaica Environment Trust welcomes a move for increased fines. This is indeed something that we've been calling on for many years, and these are promises that have been made for many years as well. So we're happy to see that the fines are going to be increased and significantly increased. The question that some are asking, is it enough? Um, it, I think it could have been higher, especially for corporate bodies, but I think it's a step in the right direction, and it is something that is long overdue. Meanwhile, the JET CEO is raising concerns about the ability of the government to enforce the new penalties. Dr. Rodriguez Moody is requesting, or rather questioning, whether there are enough human resources at the National Environment and Planning Agency, Nepal, to go after polluters. Importantly, as we increase fines, what needs to come along with that is enforcement. And so that is something that has been an issue. We've been hearing the National Environmental Planning Agency say that they have issues in the sense of not enough enforcement officers and so forth. So I think it's important that we hear how that will also, how there will also be some changes with regards to enforcement to go hand in hand with the increased fines. Dr. Teresa Rodriguez Moody, the CEO of the Jamaica Environment Trust, JET. Meanwhile, JET is also in support of the proposed ban on the release of effluent into the Rio Cobra in St. Catherine. This was another move announced by the Prime Minister during his budget presentation. While supporting the policy, Dr. Rodriguez Moody is questioning how the move will be enforced. It's a good move, but the Rio Cobra and its tributaries is massive. So it begs the question, how will this be done if we already have a challenge enforcing the existing situation, the existing organizations that are allowed to discharge? How will this be managed? How will enforcement take place? So while it is again a step in the right direction, there is the question of how we're going to manage this. But additionally, the Rio Cobra is only one import, one river and it's yes it is an, is an important watershed but what about our other rivers what about our other important watershed we shouldn't just be reacting to the issue of the, the rear cobra just because of the repeated incidents of pollution dr teresa rodriguez moody the ceo of jet now 12 people have been killed in road crashes across the island over the past 13 days. The latest fatality occurred on Sunday after a man succumbed to injuries he received in a two-vehicle collision on the Winston Jones Highway in Manchester. His identity has not yet been released. According to the Island Traffic Authority, between March 12 and March 22, 11 people died in road collisions. The youngest victim was a six-year-old boy who died from injuries sustained in a crash at Mountainside in St. Elizabeth last Thursday. The fatalities have pushed a number of lives lost since the start of the year to 93. That's eight fewer than the 101 recorded over the corresponding period last year. The authority also recorded an 8% decline in road crashes since January. Pedestrians account for 18% of road users killed. Motorcyclists make up the majority of the fatalities with 40%. The Island Traffic Authority says the leading cause of road fatalities continues to be excessive speed with no regard to road conditions. St. Elizabeth registered the most road fatalities with 12. Attorney at law Dr. Marcus Goff says the government's decision to assist a group of Haitian orphans is a step in the right direction but does not signal a firm shift in the government's approach to asylum seekers. Dr. Goff says assisting the orphans is a good move in light of the escalation of violence in their home country. So it would seem that uh, due to the mounting you know, situation there and visibility of the issue that the government has decided to, after a long time of postponing, approving it to now approve the um, orphans coming, you know. So I think that certainly it's a good move. I mean, many Haitians are in jeopardy of losing their lives, um, you know, in what's currently happening in Haiti. And so any number that we can accommodate, you know, safely, then we certainly should do so. However, he maintains that the government's current approach to asylum seekers needs to be entirely consistent with the nation's obligations under international law. We still don't see that being a shift towards properly implementing genetic obligations under international law to facilitate a transparent process where persons who are fleeing can come properly screened, be enabled to make an application for asylum and to be processed according to law. You know, that's what we still don't see, you know, any commitment in that regard. 
Dr. Goff also notes that the group of 37 Haitian migrants who arrived in Jamaica last July are anxious about their potential return to Haiti. He's appealing to the government to afford the migrants asylum amidst the increasing conflict in the country. Emotionally, they are feeling very vulnerable, you know, to the uncertain future and the prospect of being sent back to what, as you say, the escalating crisis. So I think um, even while the government, you know, has been meeting with CARICOM leaders and trying to find solutions, is in the same breath that the 37 persons, they have been refused application for asylum here. Having been here since July last year, you know, the sent back in the face of what we know is certain trauma would really be devastating to them personally, you know, and to Jamaica, make an image internationally. That's attorney at law, Dr. Marcus Goff. In international news now, Donald Trump has just a few hours left to prevent the seizure of his assets in a business fraud case that threatens his fabled property empire. A deadline for him to pay the $464 million penalty for inflating his net worth is due to expire on Monday. If he fails to either secure a bond or delay the process in court, the authorities in New York State can freeze his bank accounts or target his properties. A separate legal threat to the former president also takes shape later. He may, he may be given a date for his first criminal trial at a hearing in New York in the so-called hush money case involving the adult film star Stormy, Stormy Daniels. Mr. Trump is expected to attend in person to hear his lawyers argue that the case should be dismissed due to the recent disclosure of thousands of documents about a key witness. In the fraud case, he may yet receive a lifeline from a New York appeals court that is considering his application for a stay on the judgment. Last week, his lawyer said he had been unable to cover the penalty despite approaching numerous financial companies to provide a bond. To secure a bond, an individual has to demonstrate to the company that they have enough liquidity, usually in the form of cash or stocks. If Mr. Trump secured a bond on Monday, it would protect his assets while he continues his appeal. That's the news at 7 this morning. I'm Ricardo Brooks. Sign up for the JN Money Card. It's safe, convenient, and free. The time by JN Money is 16 minutes after 7. Taxpayers, pay your taxes online at www.jamaicatax.gov.jm. Call 888-TAX-HELP for more details. The temperature brought to you by Tax Administration Jamaica, working together to serve you better, is... It's 27 degrees Celsius here in the capital, 25 out west in Montego Bay. Street Smart and the JUTC Morning Commute is brought to you by JUTC, your route to excellence, and the Road Safety Unit in the Island Traffic Authority. It's 17 minutes after 7. It's time for our no, it's a second, a second update from the streets. Ludlow McLean has street smarts. Good morning again, Ludlow. Morning time again, recorded. Ricky B, uh, the viewers. Good morning to all our visitors. You know, we always welcome you. And uh, we, we are happy that you chose Jamaica as your favorite de destination. We wish you all the best while you're here. And uh, the situation, motorists, is that it's now bright and sunny. And remember, I always say, St. Catherine is a very large community of the over... On the Old Arbor side there, coming to, you know, all these different areas in Old Arbor, the diff various schemes along Old Arbor Road or off Old Arbor Road. Lots of traffic there. On the other side, if you're in the Medores, Dovecot area, you're coming from various schemes there, Montague Heights, so on and so forth. So you're on the old uh, the St. John's Road. You're going to have traffic. Traffic on both sides, Old Arbor Road, St. John's Road, and on the bypass, the traffic is also there taking you to that roundabout by Old Arbor Road, and then exiting 
towards the other roundabout by Jose Marti, then onto the Mandela. But the Mandela is moving steadily all the way towards the ferry police station. There it builds up later going further towards the six miles area and by extension. Spanish Town Road is quite busy indeed, hectic. And those of you who are exiting Portmore will also have the traffic going via Municipal Boulevard onto the Mandela and also the other exit because George Lee Boulevard, uh, the 85 route area there, uh, Brayton Parkway, uh, all these areas, uh, Dawkins Drive leading to the toll, quite ex- it's extremely busy making your way to the toll. Loop. And uh, Marco Scarver Drive is also busy. East Avenue going across to uh, Spanish Town Road, then onto Maxi is quite busy also. And those of you going on to Harbour Street, you also have traffic. So in these areas, there's lots of traffic, and it's building all the time. Most intersections are busy at the moment. I wouldn't even mention half. Well, I have to mention Avenue because those of you are using Molans Road to get onto Eastwood Park Road, you're going to have traffic going up to South Odin Avenue and coming down Half a Tree, Constant Spring Road into Half a Tree. All lanes are extremely busy now. Uh, earlier on, Barbic going up towards Ligon, it wasn't too bad, but it has built up significantly now. And all of these areas up into Ligon Square, we call it Matilda's Corner. Quite active indeed. And Barbican Road, yes, all the areas, uh, Ross Lights, Grand Spain Road, onto Barbican Road, and all, and, uh, Ross Lights via, uh, Bird Circle Lane onto Barbican Road, quite busy, quite active. So it's a very busy Monday morning, and I have no doubt that the traffic flow will increase beyond this report. So we urge you to be patient, and as usual, look out for your neighbor. It is so important to maneuver your wing mirrors, your side mirrors, and all the various mirrors, and concentrate on the road because so many distractions. All right, it's our second report for the morning, and as usual, at Street Smart, your safety is all concerned. Ricardo, Ricardo, Ricardo. Yes, Ludlow. Productivity involves so many things. We hear about productivity. It is so it's going to be very efficient. The bus needs to run very efficient so people can get to work on time. And not only when they get to work on time, they don't stop to have coffee and all these things. So everything involves productivity. Working within a budgeted time frame and getting the work done within your, you know, usual 8 to 5 or 9 to 5. So it's a lot of things that uh, affects uh, productivity. It's not only just coming to work and work, but you must work efficiently. The quality of your output must be impeccable. So, as usual, at Street Smart, your safety is all concern. Ricardo. Thanks, Ludlow. Ludlow McLean there with Street Smart. And just to confirm, it does appear that there was an eclipse uh, this morning, a lunar eclipse, yes, uh, based on what I'm seeing here. Uh, it appeared to have happened around about 3, CNN says. Let me, yes, at 3. Yes. <laughs> Did you want me to know you have a telescope? Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Because Mr. King says, listeners, I didn't see that. I have my telescope as if he was up at three looking up, gazing at the, the heavens. Um, you know, <laughs> it's Holy Week, by the way, for Christians. Yeah. Uh, leading to, of course, the Passion of, of Christ on Friday and then Easter Monday, um, Easter Sunday first. And then, of course, Easter Monday. So, a holy week for Christians. Up next, the front page. Street Smart and the JUTC Morning Commute was brought to you by JUTC, your route to excellence, and the Road Safety Unit in the Island Traffic Authority. Front page is brought to you today by ABC Electrical Sales for a better choice in the electrical business. For all your electrical needs, visit ABC Electrical Sales. They stock a wide variety of electrical supplies including plugs, switches, panel boards and conduits plus energy saving fixtures. ABC Electrical Sales stocks brands like GE, Siemens, Philips, Cutler Hammer and Allen Bradley. They also offer free Allenwide delivery just to suit your needs. Visit them at Shop 8, Hackley Park Plaza, Kingston 10, or call 876-754-3714-5 or 876-754-3825-8. APC Electrical Sales, for a better choice in the electrical business.
23 minutes after 7 o'clock. Thank you so much for staying with us. We're now on the front page. I'm Said Bernard. And I'm Ricardo Brooks. The Parliament has encouraged the Auditor General's Department, the AGD, that it should follow the law which governs treatment of reports before they are submitted to the House of Representatives for tabling. Nationwide News understands that this was the basis upon which two reports were sent back to the Auditor General's Department by the Clerk of the Houses of Parliament following a ruling by House Speaker Juliet Holness. Parliament reportedly sent back the two reports to the AGD after the House Speaker was advised, advised by Parliament's legal counsel that the AGD did not comply with the requirement that the documents should have been first sent to the responsible minister. Now, correspondence which was sent on January 8, 2024 by the Clerk of the Houses, Valerie Curtis to Auditor General Pamela Monroe Ellis, said that the reports were not sent for tabling in the House of Representatives in accordance with the provisions of the law. The reports are a special audit of the financial Services Commission, the FSC, and a special audit of Tax Administration, Jamaica, TAJ. The correspondence from the House Clerk, which was sent to the Auditor General, uh, reads, Please be advised that the aforementioned reports are being returned to you in accordance with the ruling of the Speaker of the House of Representatives that all reports from the Auditor General's Department, which are an audit of a public body, will be tabled in accordance with Section 30 of the Financial Administration and Audit Act, that's the FAAA, and or Section 13A of the Public Administration and Audit Act and the procedures outlined there. Therein. To discuss this, we are joined by Senator Government Senator Shereen Golden Campbell to get some insight. Good morning, Senator. Good morning, Senator. M- morning, morning, Shereen. Morning, morning, Shavan. How are you? All? We're good. And you? I'm good. It's Monday morning. I'm good. <laughs> all right, good, Senator. Let's get right into it then. Now, I want to understand first of all: Do you have information as to under what legislation did the Auditor General submit these reports to the Parliament? Um. No, I am not actually privy to anything that the Auditor General had submitted to the Parliament. I've been hearing it in the news media myself, Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm not sure under which which particular legislation she submitted it. I did hear something about Section 29 in the FAA Act, but I can't confirm. Um, But you know, it's not it, it it's not a it's not a question that is is really one that should confuse everyone because contrary to how the discussion has been happening in the public domain, Mm -hmm. the Constitution is very clear about the Auditor General's authority and role and the supporting legislation, both the Financial Administration and Audit Act and the Public Bodies Management and Accountability Act, which are the two major relevant ones, um, are fairly clear as well. And I think if I might... Um, we are we are confusing the constitutional duty of the Auditor General, who has a clear duty at large to audit central government. If you look at Section 122.1 in the Constitution, it is very clear. The accounts of the courts, the accounts of the, 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 the offices of the clerks to the Senate and the House, and the accounts of all departments and offices of the government of Jamaica, including offices of the cabinet and some named commissions, the judicial services, police, and public service, right? Mm -hmm. That is the constitutional function of the Auditor General to look at those offices. Now, further down in Section 122.1, the Constitution sets out that notwithstanding it has laid out her duty in relation to central government, Nothing prevents her from such other functions in relation to the accounts of public authorities and other bodies. But it, 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 it is very specific in how it says those functions can be um, performed. And it says, as may be prescribed by or under any law for the time being in force in Jamaica. It means then that if the, the Auditor General is to act in relation to public bodies and other authorities, not central government, central government being your ministries and your departments of government. If she's to act in relation to public bodies, it means there must be a statute, some law existing that outlines how she is to engage her role. Mm-hmm. Understood, Senator. But 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 I think the, the public concern is, having found 
or uh, or having alleged that the Auditor General has not submitted her report in accordance with the, the, the relevant legislation as the Constitution uh, provides, and the reports are being sent back, would it not have been prudent for the Speaker at an appropriate time to advise the public that she was taking this course of action and why she was taking this course of action for the avoidance of doubt? Um... Ricardo, I'm not sure if I, if I can answer that question. A report is sent to the Parliament. The Parliament communicates to the Auditor General. It would appear to me that the two offices can have a discussion on that matter and determine what is the appropriate legislation under which she should submit it. I don't think it really requires the kind of public kerfuffle that has happened. But, Senator, that is taking it, but that's taking it but that's taking it outside of its context, which is that mm -hmm. there is public concern about whether reports are being suppressed. And the timing. Yes, yes, Ricardo. But 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 understand this. I am not going to take that line of argument with you this morning. And the reason I'm not taking it is because I think that is a distraction and that we need to be guided by the law which is clear. That is where my Jamaican people must be looking to, not this thing about who is suppressing. What does the law say? It is the law that will tell you whether the actions of the Speaker are appropriate or the actions of the Auditor General are appropriate. And, and I Senator, gave you the background. No, I and I appreciate the, the background, but you've come now to belatedly explain an action that has already been taken that has added to the public concern. And my simple question to you is, would it not have been prudent at the first instance when the Speaker made her determination on the law, and I'm not challenging that, mm -hmm. that she was sending back the report to, to have so advised the country for the avoidance of doubt? I'm not answering that question in the way you're asking. All right, because, let, let's, let's hold it. I let's hold it. We're up on the break. Let's hold it. And after the break, you respond. Give up every illegal gun. Call the police at 119 or Crime Stop at 311. The time by the Ministry of National Security is 7:31. Yes, me get the last cheese. Taste the beat. Brothers and sisters, at the end of Easter service, we have cheese. Taste the beat. No one day we're getting a bun and cheese. Taste the beat. Serve, sell me some bun and cheese. Taste the beat. Why this look a nice with some tasty cheese? We get on real bad with the tasty cheese boy Tasty beat with tasty cheese did you know that many of my schoolmates have an unhealthy diet, especially at school, and now 23% of them are overweight and are obese? And so one less sugary drink at my school may mean one friend less or two or three at risk of cavities or diabetes. And if we're served less foods high in saturated fats, sugar, and sodium, it may reduce our risk from obesity, heart disease, and high blood pressure. The solution is simple, right? Act now. Let's get unhealthy foods and beverages out of our schools. A message from the Heart Foundation of Jamaica and partners for all your electrical needs visit abc electrical sales they stock a wide variety of electrical supplies including plugs switches panel boards and conduits plus energy saving fixtures abc electrical sales stocks brands like ge siemens phillips cutler hammer and allen bradley they also offer free island-wide delivery just to suit your needs visit them at shop 8 hackley park plaza kingston 10 or call 876-754-3714-5 or 876-754-3825-8. APC Electrical Sales, for a better choice in the electrical business. Nothing says Happy Easter like an Alliance MoneyGram money transfer. And we get something so sweet with it. Pick up your Alliance MoneyGram money transfer of US $150 or more from March 18 to March 28th. And get an Easter bun and cheese while stocks last at select locations. Happy Easter to you too. Remember, head to the sweetest location to pick up your MoneyGram money transfer this Easter. Alliance. A member of the Sajikor Group. 
Shop now and save in Active Home Center Home Sweet Home Sale. Wednesday, March 20th to 27th. Take up to 30% off selected tiles, bathroom fixtures, lighting, and so much more. Shop selected 18-inch ceramic tiles starting at $199 plus GCT. This sale lasts for one week only, so don't miss out. Visit our showrooms in Kingston and Montego Bay. Conditions apply. Active Home Center. More savings, more choices. Thank you so much for staying with us here on Nationwide this morning. You're on the front page. I'm Ricardo I'm Brooks. We're pleased to be joined by Government Senator Shireen Golding Campbell, uh, sharing some perspectives on uh, this concern regarding the House Speaker returning reports of the Auditor General, alleging that those reports were sent to the Parliament under uh, or not sent under the proper uh, legislation to be tabled. Before the break, Senator, I asked you if it might not have been wise for the Speaker uh, to advise the country that she was taking this course of action and why she was to avoid doubt and confusion you said you will not answer that question you were going to tell me why are you hearing me yes i am okay uh, let me rally back because it's not really a refusal it's just that i think the question is misdirecting our attention inappropriately mm. um i as i understand it the speaker made a ruling that ruling is published in her ruling she states what the reasoning is behind her decision. That is the publication to the country because it is something that is, is, is levied in Parliament. I'm not sure what other conversation the Speaker should have outside of that. And I'm not even sure if it would be appropriate for her. I mean, you're talking about her going to hold a press conference. She's made a ruling and she's explained herself in her ruling. Well, I wasn't thinking a press conference. Mm -hmm. From the chair would have been fine. No, but she's made a ruling, Ricardo. That is what a ruling is. But a Senator ruling is the Speaker speaking to the Parliament and the nation as to the decision she has taken and why. That is her conversation with us, and we ought to be listening to those. No, but I, but I think you're, you're conflating two things. Because, no, I appreciate that she made the ruling about how she was going to treat reports going forward. But having decided that these specific reports didn't were not in compliance with her ruling and that she was going to send them back, was it last Friday? I'm asking you whether, because now you know, and, and I, I suspect that's where Said is going to go with mm -hmm. you, now the opposition is claiming right. it, to say, aha, see, we told you that this was happening. Gentlemen. Would gentlemen, it not have been wise to just advise that she was doing this in accordance with her ruling? Question, Ricardo, because you keep avoiding person. it, Senator. Because that is a political brouhaha. Which, is the, which is the is, entire point see, of this controversy. See. Yes, but the political brouhaha is going on because we are not speaking to the people about what the law says. You seem to not be bothered. No, I gave you. No, 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 no. That's not fair, Senator. I gave you at least four minutes. I gave you four minutes to explain what the law says, and you have done that, and nobody has challenged that. In relation to and nobody have been sent back. Nobody has challenged what the law says, but you don't want to. You don't want to answer the question. I suspect Said has one for you. No, that's not true. But Senator. The political question you're asking me is exactly because there is a challenge to what the law says or the speaker's interpretation of what the law says. So, so Senator, That's the challenge. Senator, don't you think it brings us back to the point as well that perhaps it would be good for the House Speaker to say something on the matter as it relates to the, the time narrative that the opposition is now bringing? These were, brought, these, were, these were submitted to the Parliament from December and January, respectively, for the FSC and the TAJ. The ruling submitted is coming to about the Parliament just Friday. It was submitted to the Parliament based on the language of the release submitted to the parliament and the language on of which release the and release of the, the letter the letter yes. from the clerk uh, of the houses to the auditor it was general. submitted to the parliament from december and january return on friday and, and returned return on friday. just the last friday yes. don't you think the house speaker speaking I, on that I'm matter not aware would of help that letter said i'm not aware of that letter i haven't seen that letter okay what I so you don't know senator that those reports were submitted to the parliament in december and january what I understand is they were, uh, they were submitted and the Speaker made a ruling sometime around that time. I, I understood the Speaker to have made a ruling in November. 
but I could be wrong. Remember, I don't Senator, think there the could hope. be no there could be no ruling in November if the first report concerning this very ruling that we're speaking about the first report I think the was Senator, submitted in December. I think the Senator is speaking January. broadly, but we're speaking specifically of these reports that have been sent back. I can't the letters, speak to the dates, guys. I mean, very it's well. not, I'm not trying to avoid you. I'm simply saying I don't I don't have that information. Very I well. don't sit in the House and I sit in very the well. Senate, and these reports would not have come first to the Senate. What I understood to be the, 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 the timeline was they were submitted and a ruling was handed down. They were returned and they were sent back. So this return, I understand it to be a second return, not a first return. Now, it's for you to go check that. But well, that according to this letter, understand. it doesn't appear as a second return. Okay, very well. Uh, let's move on. So you said the issue rests on... Uh, misunderstanding of the law I, is that a deliberate misunderstanding by the opposition you think come on ricardo how are you going to ask me if that's a deliberate misunderstanding by the opposition you don't have to ask them that no of all you've heard of that. all you've heard from them senator i don't know i know that there are two types of ways that the reports must be tabled if it's central government, when it is delivered, it must be tabled immediately. If it is public bodies, it must be sent first to the minister responsible. The minister responsible has two months to review and get the comments of the entity being audited. And if the minister does not table it in parliament, at the end of those, or within those two months, the auditor general has a duty to send it to the speaker, and when she sends it to the speaker, although the language is not particularly clear as, or as clear as it is with the central government report, the, the, the presumption is that once she sends it to the speaker, it must be tabled. Yeah. But as a but public bodies must first go to the minister before the auditor general seeks to table them, yes. because the speaker has no authority on the law to table the report of a public body if she if she's aware that it has not been sent to the minister. Mm -hmm. And that is really what the crux of the matter is, and it's not a confusing one. Yes. So while you want to draw me in, then you should know me by now. When I stand up in the parliament, I'm really not usually in the political brouhaha. I'm trying to deal with the law so that we can be properly guided as a nation as to how we do things. We do not need to get into a cascade over any, any and everything. Yes. We need to read the law, and understand so for you, what it tells us. And so for you, this is strictly a matter of law, and uh, as you see it, the speaker is acting in accordance with the law and therefore there should be no controversy over there this. should be no controversy why there is is not a question you should put to me because just like i read the law the the, the opposition has attorneys over there who can read the law too mm -hmm. and i have not heard anyone come up and say that the speaker's interpretation is wrong because section blah blah of this law mm -hmm. says she's wrong mm -hmm. nobody has quoted anything or or, or given any evidence from the statutes and the constitution that we have to say she's wrong if they do i'm willing to debate that but that's not what has happened with going out in the public domain and throwing words about suppression mm. and blah 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 when the law is clear and the speaker has a duty to follow the law in my estimation, in relation to these reports, which I understand to be public body reports mm -hmm. of the two entities, it was not an annual she report. is correct in my legal opinion. Yes, and we won't put this question to you, but we've asked the Auditor General if she knows why the reports were submitted or returned to her. She says she will not answer that question. I see her quoted in the Gleaner as saying she's unclear and she was surprised by it being sent back. So I, I hope some clarity is brought mm -hmm. by the Speaker, certainly, uh, when she takes the chair tomorrow. Well, you have to examine the sections under which she sends the report. Right. No, no, she's right if it started out there. No, yeah, 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 man. Uh, no, I appreciate that. Um, so... For you, Senator, strictly a matter of law. Um, what more? I leave the politics for the politicians. No problem. What more then can be done to assist Jamaicans in understanding okay. these issues, so that when the political brouhaha that you don't want to be drawn into arises, yeah, it, it can be quickly put down because this you has. You want me to give you the first easy one? This has gone on for months. You're gonna tell when me not to ask me. the question that I asked you, but when no, you that's a cop out, senator. Come on, yes. start the conversation with the legal principles. Mm. 
right? When we understand our legal principles, then we know what the pathway is, and it doesn't lend itself to us quarreling about something that's not supported by the law. And we can do that. I know the, the speaker has taken a position that things must be published in Parliament. I understand she has taken a position that all documents that come to Parliament, there must be a sh schedule mm -hmm. put on the website indicating when it comes, when it is tabled, if it is sent back, when it is sent back, etc., etc. That will allow people to see very clearly and transparently how documents come into Parliament are treated with. But we as citizens, Ricardo, also have a duty to concern ourselves with the things that are happening in our house mm -hmm. and to inform ourselves as well. We can't just get up and sit down and talk about things on an emotional basis. We must be guided by the rules that govern our society. Senator, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it this morning. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good Have one. a great week. Good, good. Yeah, man. Happy you Easter. You too. Yeah, well... She, I mean, she's right insofar as, you know, people should inform themselves. And what, obviously, if the law says, is what the law says, then right. that's just the law. Right. But she wouldn't go there. But obviously, there's a political side uh, exactly. to this. Exactly. And, uh, and perhaps we should, we should try, Michelle, now to get the opposition. Yeah. Because the senator is correct. Yeah. They have not cited any relevant part of any law by which they think the speaker... Or, or th that they think the speaker is running afoul of. Mm -hmm. They have not done that. But, but Ricardo, That's a fair point. It, they have said mm -hmm. that she has not released the opinions right. that the info right. that she released, right. uh, she received rather, right. from the, the Attorney General. Mm -hmm. But again, that by itself is not enough. That the Senator and the, and is right. The timing. They but should say why exactly. they, they are opposed to her I, course I, of action. I, I, I don't think as well you can be opposed to the return of the reports unless and until you get an understanding as to how the reports were submitted to Parliament in yes. December and January. Because yes. then, Which is a question we've been asking right, the Auditor because General. What, what yeah. happens now is that you are able to now compare and contrast the different legislation because on the face of it, based on what I'm seeing here and the legislation referred to by the, the Clerk of the House of Representatives, she's correct. Mm. Yeah. So I want to see now where the conflict is as it relates to a matter of law. Is it Section 29 of the FAA Act? which speaks to the annual report and it being tabled to Parliament. And it also notes at subsection 2 that every report, Ricardo, must be uh, addressed to the, house, uh, the, the Speaker of the House. Notwithstanding, though, that further down in the legislation, it does say that that report must also be sent. So it could be addressed to the House Speaker in mm. Ricardo. But that addressed um, report should to, be the sent to the speaker, minister responsible. should be sent to the House Speaker and that House Speaker is now the person who would table it along with his observations having gotten two months. It is only the when... The the to the minister. Right. To the minister. Right. right. It's only after the two months have elapsed and nothing has happened on the minister's part mm. where it would be submitted directly to the parliament. Mm -hmm. But, bottom line, based on section 29, all reports must be addressed to the House Speaker. So, so in the I'm two wondering. months that have elapsed, is it was it sent to the minister? Uh, and didn't uh, exactly. Uh, so that's an important. That's question. an important question because but it would she, be exactly two months right, that now would have but, been. But right. she's not in a position to answer that question, which is why we couldn't put that to her. Mm. So I, I she, the the law, she's correct on the law based on what I've seen from the ruling. Right. But I think there are some more questions as to the circumstances surrounding this. And might not it be helpful to release the attorney general's exactly. opinion in full? Exactly. It would be, be helpful. Put to, all doubt yeah, to yeah, rest. Yeah. As to Put what all the, the Attorney rest. General opined on this. Put matter. all doubt that, that might help. That might help. Put all doubt to rest. We're well, upon the break. We take the break. After the break, the new mayor of Kingston, Andrew Swaby. You're listening to Nationwide 90 FM. The time is 13 minutes to 8 o'clock. At Hawkeye, our mission is to deliver cutting-edge security solutions to help you keep track of the things you value most. The temperature by Hawkeye is... 27 degrees here in Capital City, Kingston, also 27 out west in Montego Bay. We're welcoming every woman with a special International Women's Day offer at Sajikor Bank. Women who apply for a Sajikor Bank credit card get 5,000 bonus points with a qualifying purchase within 30 days. That's not all. Apply for a car loan or mortgage and Sajikor Bank will welcome you with a reduction in your commitment fee. At Sajikor Bank, we want every woman to feel welcome. Conditions apply. 
My prescription meds are a part of my routine. On time, every time. No hesitation. Take your medication. NHF is here for health. NHF is here for you. Shake and go with two shake. Shake and go. Go. Grab a two shake and go. When we have to put in the work, but I'm moving slow. Grab a two shake and go. School time and not two time. Off we study yard brain. Full time. Grab a two shake and go. When we open at the gym, we have to stay healthy and fit. Grab a two shake and go. Shake and go with two shake. Packed with nine grams of protein, 24 key vitamins and minerals to keep you going. Grab a two shake and go. Big, big sale now on at Cameron Industries. Up to 50% off quarter and 5 8 inch furniture ply and other items. Now available termite resistant furniture ply, granite, quartz, and solid surface countertops. You don't want to miss these amazing deals. Visit us at Hatfield Mandible or call us at 963-0628. For all your electrical needs, visit ABC Electrical Sales. They stock a wide variety of electrical supplies including plugs, switches, panel boards and conduits, plus energy saving fixtures. ABC Electrical Sales stocks brands like GE, Siemens, Philips, Cutler Hammer and Allen Bradley. They also offer free island-wide delivery just to suit your needs. Visit them at Shop 8, Hackley Park Plaza, Kingston 10 or call 876-754-3714-5 or 876-754-3825-8. APC Electrical Sales, for a better choice in the electrical business. Ten minutes going up to eight o'clock. Thank you so much for staying with us. We're still on the front page, and we turn our eyes now to the new mayor of the KSAMC. Uh, the, the KSAMC has allocated twenty-five million to upgrade seven bathroom facilities at markets in the crossroad and downtown Kingston areas. And Mayor of Kingston, Andrew Sebi, made the disclosure following a tour of the Coronation and Crossroad markets uh, last Wednesday. For more on his plans for the KSAMC as the new mayor, we are joined by the chairman and mayor, Mr. Andrew Sebi. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Tayyid and Ricardo. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us on Nationwide this morning. Well, first of all, we see that you've done a tour and allocated some funds to upgrading uh, facilities at markets. What are some of the other plans that you have in store for the for Kingston and St. Andrew? Well, you know that. Thanks for having me. You know what? I'm big on the whole thing of issue of cleanliness of downtown and the city in general. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, well, as I've finished to have this conversation with you, I will go down to a meeting with the Solid Waste, the Executive Director of National Solid Waste Management Authority. Because we can't deny that our residents' garbage has not been collected on a timely basis. So I just want to sit with um, all the garden. And I've sit with him in the past while I was in, on the minority side and had several discussions with him to see how best we can partner to deliver a better service to the residents of Kingston and St. Andrew. But also a major part I want to have a discussion with him today would also be the whole issue of cleaning up um, the downtown and these town centers. We obviously don't have the resources to deal with it all at once, but we will certainly see how best we can phase it and make sure we're constantly cleaning and putting a proper maintenance um, system in place. That means that we can keep our, our city clean. And as it relates to, to downtown, Mayor, uh, a lot of the times the, the sewage and... The, the, the garbage and I, I saw when you were just um, installed as mayor you, you were saying you're asking the citizens to help to keep the, the place clean Is, isn't that perhaps an unhelpful call given that the situation continues to happen over and over again well uh, well first of all I believe that I know the city of continue over and over but I believe that we should have constant dialogue and working with all the partners so my approach will certainly be an approach where the Public Health Department will be at the table, National Service Management Authority, NWC, and so on. They will be there at the table, and won't be just for it. I, I intend to have quarterly meetings with them. Yes, we have committee meetings at the KCMC, but I, so for example, from, uh, like the president also have a quarterly meeting with all the stakeholders here. We contact and put, put it in place. We're also looking also at how best we can have persons, for example, our municipal police that, um, environmental ward and how we can expand those things and work with that. We also have to look at the infrastructure that we have. For example, 
if you go around the um the park central and grand park a lot of persons do um urinate around that park yet there are um urinals inside of the park i, I know first will tell me about the whole issue of it is it open at all times and we have to look at those issues we have to educate the public also about on, on these things on these things so yes i understand but we cannot be daunted with it we have to keep pressing and making sure there's clearly a need for public, public education but to make sure that we achieve these things. When can the citizens of Kingston and St. Andrew expect you to start implementing some of the promises the People's National Party made under its manifesto? For example, you're supposed to make a greater push now for accountability. Uh, you're supposed to have quarterly media briefings uh, to update the citizens of the activities of the local councils. You're supposed to publish your annual budgets in print, electronic form, and on social media. When can we expect that to start? I just appreciate now that for the last week or so, I have been going through a situation briefing, but I can clearly tell you that three months from now, we'll be having our first um, um, press, press conference where the, the CEO and myself will, will address those issues. We are going, we, 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 after putting our committee in place, I'll have to accept the budget that has been presented to the minister, and we're going to have our first town hall meeting around, around the budget. Just to say to persons, hey guys, this is a budget, and let them have a better understanding of how the case is these operated. So it, I would say within three months, you'll see a, a major shift in, the, in that direction. As it relates to your parish safety councils in, in the municipality, what's your timeline for that? And just repeat for that for me. Your parish safety councils, the, you also promised parish safety councils compromising police, uh, comprising rather police divisional commanders, churches, the SDC principals, service clubs, and community organizations. We're going we to make a major push on that. I will tell you, I, have, I mean, you said earlier on about the transparency issue. I was looking at the local, and I'm not avoiding a question, I was looking at the local um, public accounts committee but for, for us to have that, you have to have a parish development committee. So we are going to be, we are going to meet with SDC and see how best we can pull that seat. I can't give you a timeline now because I would have without the benefit of talking to the SD and SDC and see how best we can do it. But it is something that we are going to achieve in, within the first year, the first year of this um, council. Yeah, uh, your worship, you would also know that one of the significant challenges in the city is the enforcement of the building codes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, rogue developers um, not complying with permits, um, you would know well. The Integrity Commission um, just recently very critical. Um, the DPP also critical. Uh, what can the citizens expect? And if and if nothing changes, how should they judge your tenure if nothing changes well, on enforcement? The citizens can expect that will be happening from you robust discussions with the citizens and developers. But have and we been, haven't we been talking about this for quite some time now, Mayor We Swaby? have been, but you wouldn't expect that right away I'll jump in the thing. I am I have been very critical of myself of the case AFC and how it happened. Which myself. is why we'd expect that coming to the seat now, you'd be ready to go. Because I'm you know all the I'm, problems, you I know am. all the problems, you know the lack of enforcement, you know how long it's been going on now. Mm -hmm. Why aren't you ready to go? I'm not ready to go on the matter because to talk about enforcement, I have been very critical of the KCMC to say that when the number of officers that we have is woefully inadequate, I think you have about eight to nine officers there. These are the same officers that approve the, uh, recommend for approval of the plan and doing enforcement. Mm -hmm. My major shift from that is to have adequate number of officers where you can have separation of duties or probably you can even use the uh, municipal police. So these are some issues that we have to clearly deal with. We have to talk to our parent ministry and put the proper structure in place before we can push those things. I will tell you, and take, in, take for example, the child amount situation. Mm -hmm. The child amount situation is born out of you know, the lack of such cases. He refused to even respond to the residents to force them to go to an integrity commission. Mm. So there are some things now that I'm speaking to them about. Oh, hey guys, when you have issues or if persons right to the KCMP, we need to respond within X days. Even, even at the minimum, acknowledge their letters. We are talking about you now how we, I have started to reach out to you, Tech, in terms of the built the environment um, uh, department. So how can you come in and help us to bridge that gap to educate our staff and ethics and all those things? 
I bought the thing. So it was just a two so weeks would be a little bit unreasonable for us to see something that's cracking. So up. Mayor, by when can we expect then for these internal changes to be made that when people call the KSAMC and send letters to them, they will get a response and all of that? By when can we expect the implement the implementation of such a policy well, by the KSAMC? I, I, believe, I, I believe that within six months it will just see a reasonable change around in terms of those things. Because and I'm gonna be honest with you. When my talk when I my interaction with the staff there's no staff morale there, so mm. we have to see how best we can bring some production and how to help us out because they are not motivated. I will, I will say, I've said it straight up to the, the CEO. So these, there are some underlying problems that we are having there, which we have to address also. And I have to ask you, before Ricardo comes back in, the ward at theater, it's been sitting there for quite some time. It wasn't a mm-hmm. part of the manifesto of either parties. Mm-hmm. But any plans in sight as it relates to the um, ward theater? I am, I'm afraid I can't answer that one right now because that ward theater never come under a committee where I, I was exposed to what is happening there. Mm-hmm. I have set up a meeting with the former mayor and I will ask him, I will ask for, for a briefing from him on that matter. Mm-hmm. On that matter. So I'm not in a yet in a position to answer that question. If I could just take you back to the building officers, you, uh, the enforcement officers, you say there are eight now. Eight, eight now building officers. Eight, right. And to your mind, how, uh, how many do you think you would need to effectively police and enforce uh, the permits across the city? I... I, I prefer for to get some technical advice on that one based on the, the era and to see what was ideal for each person. But I mean, if, if, if I should answer off the top of my head, mm. I would say if you double it, it would, it, it would go a far away. Okay. The, the, the former mayor had, to, had said, said to me in my interaction with him when we're having discussions on the billing thing in terms of a debate in the council, right? trying to engage a debate in the council. He had said that they had made a request to the ministry. I'm yet to see what that request was. Mm-hmm. Illegal vending, finally, mm-hmm. is, is, as mm-hmm. you know, a problem across your city. Mm-hmm. Um, enforcement, in terms of how that enforcement has been carried out in the past, has been criticized. Mm-hmm. How do you intend to, to tackle the issue going forward? We will, we will have discussions with the vendors. We will have, I, I will take care of This is not new. I remember when Dunson with them was alive under started under Desmond McKenzie and continued under um, Angela Brownberg. We will have regular Friday mornings meeting with the vendor, engaging them. They see what they, uh, some of their issues are, and obviously what some of the issues are is the condition of the market. And we try to see how best we can deal with it and talk about it. But I don't want to reach a stage where you are talking about person run down purses to get them off the street. That's not where we, we are going. We are going. Yes, we have to be firm at times, but it does not necessarily have to be firm in that regard. We have to see working hand in hand with the vendors to make sure that we achieve achieve that. All right, three low hanging fruits for you that you think you can uh, hit off at least in the next month, two months, three months. Well, we have started one. I mean, we're good doing the deal with the procurement now. The first one is the batch room, as you have indicated in your opening remarks. Mm-hmm. The second one we're talking about having some cleanup, you know, um, in, in the in the major. Um, Town centers, and obviously, I will tell you up front: we have to go after the revenues. There are a lot of revenues out there for us that we haven't, we have not collected. We have to go after it to make sure that we are in a position to do some of the work that we want to do. All right, uh, that's Andrew Swaby. He's the new man in charge, the new mayor of Kingston. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it, Mayor. Thank you. Have a good one. Good. Up next, across Jamaica. Front page was brought to you today by ABC Electrical Sales for a better choice in the electrical business. You're listening to Nationwide 90 FM. The time is a minute after eight. From the mountainside to seaside, countryside to townside, inside and outside, it's across Jamaica this morning. With Across Jamaica this morning, I'm Ricardo Brooks. Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says the Know Your Numbers road tour has been successful in detecting life-threatening diseases or persons at risk for these conditions. Persons were also fitted for dentures through the Second Chance Smiles program. He says some 25% of those screened have presented with an issue and have been referred for follow-up care. 
Dr. Tufton was speaking at the Wesley Methodist Church in Mandeville, Manchester on Friday, which was the eighth stop on the island-wide Know Your Numbers tour. The events, which started last year, are designed to encourage Jamaicans to know the numbers that are vital to their health and well-being. Persons can access free tests for body mass index, BMI, vision, blood pressure, cholesterol and blood sugar, HIV, syphilis and prostate blood tests, nutrition counseling, fitness checks and dental screening and impressions. Jamaica's first artisan village is being hailed as a game changer for tourism. The over $700 million facility is situated at the former Hampden Wharf, strategically located along the corridor leading to the Falmouth cruise ship pier in Trelawney. Designed to be a hub for authentic Jamaican products, the state of the art facility is themed to tell the story of Falmouth. It will also showcase a diverse array of offerings ranging from unique craft and souvenir items to traditional cuisine as well as lively entertainment all under one roof. A soft opening of the Falmouth Artisan Village was held last week to familiarize stakeholders with the facility. The facility is set to redefine the tourism experience, enabling visitors to shop for unique products crafted by locals while enjoying the country's vibrant culture and heritage. The Falmouth Artisan Village is financed by the TEF and forms part of the wider Hampton Wharf development project. The St. Andrew South Police Division seized a Hayward G Stream 9mm pistol with a serial number erased on Oakland Road near the Painland community on Saturday. One man was arrested in connection with the seizure. The police report that about 7.45 in the night, a patrol team was on Oakland Road when they observed a man acting suspiciously. The man was arrested and searched. The gun with a magazine containing 13 9mm rounds was found in a bag the man was allegedly carrying. 20-year-old Peroy Knowles of Friendship Pen in Morant Bay, St. Thomas, has been reported missing. Mr. Knowles, who is of dark complexion, slim build, and 173 centimeters, or 5 feet 8 inches tall, also sports a braided hairstyle. The Morant Bay police report that he was last seen leaving his home on Thursday, March 21, at about 5 p.m. He was dressed in a black t-shirt, black cut-off foot pants, and a pair of slippers. Efforts to locate him have been futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Peroy Knowles is being asked to contact the Morant Bay Police at 876-982-2233. That's 876-982-2233. The Police 119 emergency number or the nearest police station. The National Water Commission, the NWC, is advising that its Claremont Water Facility in St. Anne is out of operation due to an internal electrical problem. This is causing disruptions in water supply to NWC customers in Claremont, Stairfield, Orange Park, Golden Grove, Alderton, Lidford Housing Scheme, and Rural Retreat. The NWC says its maintenance teams have been mobilized to have the issue resolved in the shortest possible time. That's across Jamaica this morning. I'm Ricardo Brooks. Me grow up and see my granny I save her money under her mattress. But at thought all times something. That's where I save my money in the bank. And become a one buy a little house. Me also saving a bill in society. We have to be smart with how we save our money. So what if the bank crash? <laughs> Well, that's where JDIC comes in. Make I tell you something. With the JDIC Deposit Insurance Scheme, once you save your money in a commercial bank, merchant bank, or billing society, your deposit is covered up to a maximum of $1.2 million per depositor per financial institution if the institution fails. All the information that you need is available at JDIC.org and you can follow their social media platform for more information. JDIC, protecting deposits for you and Easter time come, we're gonna pick up our mother's Easter bun. I eat at the king, you know. All the right ingredients, the proper amount of fruit, well soaked and baked to soft, delicious perfection. Mm. A sub on for nice. So whether you add cheese, butter, or even a patty, Mother's Easter bun is the one that will make yourself mm. a sub on for nice. Mother's Easter bun, I the king, you know. Hurry and grab one before it's done. More deliciousness. More deliciousness from Mother's Bakery. 
Hello? Yes, dear. But just a call for tell him I get the thing. Nothing says Happy Easter like an Alliance MoneyGram money transfer. And I'm gonna get something so sweet with it. Pick up your Alliance MoneyGram money transfer of US $150 or more from March 18th to March 28th and get an Easter bun and cheese while stocks last at select locations. Happy Easter to you too! Remember, head to the sweetest location to pick up your MoneyGram money transfer this Easter. Alliance! A member of the Sajikor Group. It's eight minutes after eight, and now we look back at Champs 2024. Kingston College landed its 35th hold on the Mortimer Geddes Trophy after retaining their boys' crown, while Edwin Allen secured a 10th girls' title as the 113th Boys and Girls Athletics Championships climaxed at the National Stadium. Casey scored 335 points to beat off the challenge of Jamaica College, who amassed 278 points after five days of grueling action. Calabar finished third with 194 points, Excelsior fourth with 122 points, and rounding out the top five was St. Jago with 111.5 points. In the girls' section, the Frankfield-based Edwin Allen scored 335.5 points to unseat Heidel, who ended second with 326 points. St. Jago, 171, Homewood, 149, and Wilmers, 128.5 points, rounded out the top five. Kingston College ended the championship with a stunning performance to win the 4x4 100-meter relay, while Heidel did the same on the girls' side. The major sponsors, Grace Kennedy, paid a special tribute to the late iconic track and field analyst Hubert Lawrence, who passed away on February 23. To look back now at Champs 2024, we're being joined by Nationwide's sports editor, Wade Walker. Good morning, Wayne. Good morning, Ricardo. Good Bye. morning, Saeed. All right, so Saeed has stepped out um, okay. uh, briefly. All right, so first of all, your view on the overall staging of uh, this 135th edition of Champs. Well, Champs this year was, I don't know, there were moments during the five days that you get the impression that Champs was, and it was in, unthinkable, because who would have thought it? Champs is what it is. You don't, you don't sell Champs. You stage Champs. You put Champs on your perspective of who is competing there. It is just one of those events that, it's a must-see, no matter what. Yes. But there were times during the five days you get the impression that it was sort of a drab and you wonder if you really want to see. Mm. But then it, it, it caught itself up on the final day. Uh, I suppose midway, the penultimate day as well. But certainly on the final day, even on the final day, you know, there were times because I was there on Saturday doing stuff for, for, for Sports Nation Live on the outside. And, and you start to wonder, mm -hmm. is this the moment that Champs finally will realize that some work has got to be done to sort of keep people interested in the event? Because run about maybe 5, 30 days mm -hmm. you, you you still, people are still coming into the stadium. In former years, you don't get that. that if you don't get to the stadium by a certain time, and you, you have a bit of knowledge about it, right. car because you work there at them. You don't have people coming through the turnstile. You, the, the gate is closed. Because mm -hmm. you have reached capacity. Oh, yes, of course. Yes. And then another thing that struck me was that I entered from the auto wheel drive end up to the stadium. And it took me next to no time to get up to the stadium. And that is the time I started to say to myself, wow. But then it caught itself up mm -hmm. later on, right about 6 o'clock or so. Then suddenly it, the, the champs of all came back in my view. Um, but, but generally and overall, it, it, it was another good staging, but it was a staging that has given the organizers a, you know, a bit of an uh, opportunity to, 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 to sort of look 
back up, you know, the whole five days to see, you know, do we really need to sort of change things up to sort of keep the interest in this thing going. Mm -hmm. But generally, it was, a, it was a good chance. It is what it is. It is chance. Yeah. And uh, that delay, just before you come yeah. inside, that delay on Friday, because yeah. I was surprised to see that at right. minutes to 11, mm -hmm. uh, races were still on track on Friday. Talk to us about that delay on Friday, day, day, day four. Yeah, so the, the meet was on time. Um, except for there was some damage to, to, the, to the track, the surface. I think that affected lanes one, two, three, possibly four. Ray, Ray Harvey, who is the, the, the man in charge of, you know, sort of directing the lead, he's, he's one of the most experienced at, at that, not just in Jamaica, but in the, in the region. And I, I guess if it wasn't for him, you, you probably wouldn't have the delay mm -hmm. because just looking at it, you didn't get the impression there was a great deal to it. But he's such an experienced man. And when he looked at it, he realized that, no, this could be injurious to, to the young athletes, to any athlete for mm -hmm. that matter. It's a little bubble under the surface and it, it, was, it, needed, it needed repair. Um, and, and, and so they made the decision to sort of delay it a bit and to get it sorted. So they called the stadium staff and they came by and they, they, they sort of, you know, repaired the area. But then you needed time for it to dry out. And, and they started maybe a, an hour mm -hmm. after the repair. Mm -hmm. And after that, they realized that it still needed a bit more time. Mm -hmm. And then, so the decision was made to push the events that were scheduled for that time back. And, and hence, you've got the, the long uh -huh. delay and ultimately, see, you know, the, the, the athletes having to stay I there. I mean, there are many people who told me that when they turned the television sets on or the gadgets where they were watching, mm -hmm. they thought they were watching replays. I did too. I, at first, I did uh, too. I was surprised. Oh, yes, was because I was surprised. Of, uh, a lot of persons on social media was like, why am I still at the stadium? And I'm like, oh. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if they could have done anything different. Maybe start the next day earlier and mm. have them come to do it. Because one of my, my fellow journalists, he didn't tell me personally, but I was looking at his post on a, 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 a group that I was in. Mm -hmm. And he was saying that at 1 a.m., he lives in, in Catherine. And mm -hmm. he said at 1 a.m., he saw Tim Jay go, I don't know, couldn't be athletes, but so, supporters. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was an athlete. Uh -huh. I'm trying to remember if he said athletes, but I don't know whether athletes would be out there because they would normally be together. Right. But some people coming from the stadium we're waiting on taxis mm. in Spanish Town at 1 a.m. Oh, wow. And, and yeah, so it, I don't know if they are organized. I don't want to come down too hard on them mm -hmm. because I don't know what the intricacies were with the schedule and right. if they could have moved it to the next. But I remember one year when an event was run the Sunday morning because they couldn't sort it out the Saturday mm -hmm. night. So I was just wondering if they couldn't have gotten things together early um, Saturday instead of starting at the time they did just to facilitate those and so on. But, you know, it is I think we saw mm, everything yeah. at this year's championship. Well, well, Wayne, talk to us about the, the standout performances. Uh, Jamaica College, for example, sweeping the 800 meter. The rebound of some corporate area schools as well. Uh, St. George's College, Queens, Alpha. Yeah. Well, JC, the Saturday afternoon, it was just, it was just fantastic to watch. Who, 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 who does something like this? To sweep the 800 meters is not easy. But then we all know that Jamaica College has this powerful hold on the 800 meters and they, they show the sort of dominance throughout the season that you know it, it wasn't surprising but then yes the sweep it was was a step too far really and it was just fantastic in the early day in the early um, part of saturday in fact it's a surge that a lot of people were expecting and at one stage after two events they had about 25 points because they got the quinella and they got first and must be six in the next one. I think it was just, it was just really, really surging and, and flying at that time. Tatum was buzzing and so on. But then if, you, if, you're, if you're a regular chance watcher, you were following the, the different meets throughout the season, you, you knew JC was going to surge at that time. I don't think it bothered Kingston College or the others who were contending for the major honors. But yeah, it was just brilliant to see because I can't remember anybody sweeping the 800 meters and, and so on. Uh, you asked me about uh, the resurgence of Woolmers. I really don't think it was really resurging. What happened is that there was this iconic race at the Corporate Area Championships at JC that were covered on Sports Nation Live as well, where the, the 4 by 400 meters was to decide the Corporate Area Champions, and then Excelsior was just 
cutting on that Saturday mm. afternoon, and they really, really put Wilmers to the sword. Mm. And so it was a revenge. It, it, was a, it was a massive battle between the two. It, it played out in front of people who were following the Champs Day events right throughout the season. So when they were watching at the stadium, they knew they were watching something fantastic. It was a battle between two schools who were battling for that coveted title. And to be called a champion, especially amongst the girls at Champs, is a huge thing. And so Wilmers got the revenge. Not only got the revenge, but they scored unprecedented number of points at championship. So Michael Carr, who is a resident analyst on Nationwide, and who you'll we'll be hearing exclusively in the Olympic Games this summer, he's the head coach at Wilmers for over three decades, approaching four, and it was just a wonderful moment for him. St. Mm-hmm. George's College, yes. Um, who can forget that runoff that they had by amongst themselves and, and the clock? To, to, to run alone, trying to get a medal in the four by 100 meters is not, not easy. And to see them do it on Saturday, I was happy that they got a chance mm-hmm. to, to, to do it. They ran in the same lane. Um, they were told what time they needed to get to get on the podium. And they did. They, they got the, 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 the third place. And it was a fantastic to see. But generally, as I said, um, the previous time you spoke with me, the, I think it was on Thursday, that St. George's is slowly and slowly getting my air program together. Mm-hmm. Gary Smythe over at Mushel, Mushet must also be given a great deal. Right, because that was my next question. Yeah, what do you make schools. of the performances of the smaller schools, the smaller track programs? Mushet, mm-hmm. Sydney Pagan. Yes, yeah. and Alphonsus Davis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mushet got back-to-back victories on, on Saturday in the 200 meters. I, Shania, Shania Douglas is got to be one of the standout athletes at the championship. And beating Tiana Lee Terrellon from Edwin Allen was just as special and it was magical. And I think it's going to be celebrated at Devotion today um, at the school. It, it, it was just special because Tiana Lee Terrellon is now seen as the Kavona Davis, the Brenna List, and the Tina Clayton. The, mm-hmm. She's next in line when you look at the, the number of good sprinters coming out of high school. She is one of the celebrated ones, if not the celebrated ones. In fact, she was the fastest girl at Champs this year. Oh. Her 200 meters winning time was faster than the class one winning time of Alia Baker. Oh. It's not strange. It happens before. But I'm just trying to put it the context of talent. And for Shania Douglas, from an unknown, and I put unknown in the right. Moshe, it's a smaller school, as you say. And I hope I don't sound condescending as far as the Moshe team is concerned, but they are what they are, not one of the major schools at Champs. Mm-hmm. And for her to come there and do that, and then they go on to score major points, you've got to applaud the, 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 um, the effort of Harry Smite, the coach over at, at Moshe as well. Mm-hmm. Another highlight of the championships, the Puma reveal, uh, Wayne, of the gear kit for the Olympic Games, uh, the lighting of the Olympic flame uh, nationwide will have exclusive coverage of the Paris Olympics. Talk to our listeners about what they can expect, because I hear that you'll be in the City of Lights. Yes, but, uh, all right, so let's focus on what happened on Saturday at the stadium. It, it, it was one of those secrets that they kept from the public, and it was very good that they did, because it, I suppose, wouldn't have turned out the way it did. But I started to feel a little... Um, I, I started to get an idea of what was going to happen when I saw Safa Powell outside the stadium mm. making his way in. Um, I saw one or two of Johan and so on. And I was wondering what it was. But then what struck me was they all Puma sponsored athletes. And then it started to come together. And then while I was on air with, 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 with the live coverage from out there, I saw two buses came into the stadium complex and everybody disembarked and they were in, in green. And it's a, it's a port of Jamaica, Puma signature sort of color. And I started to wonder, and I realized they were not from Jamaica. And I asked, and I said, oh, Puma executive been on the island for the last seven or eight days, shooting with you saying, cooking with you, cooking with you saying, mm-hmm. on, on one of the beaches or so on. And then it came together, and the reveal was just, was just wonderful. It was brilliant to see a number of the athletes we expect to see in Paris, you know, competing and showing off the color. I love what I saw from the the, the color. I mean, not all of it, but generally, I, I think I'd wear them. But it was wonderful to see those. Yeah. It, it, they, they said that that kit is uh, very close to the one that Merlin Otti uh, wore several mm-hmm. years ago at that Olympics. Very mm-hmm. good uh, kit. But uh, finally, we tell us what's next for these kids on the track circuit. All right. So the first Games, the annual first Games, they're heading off to St. George's Grenada 
um, so to compete in the seriously games and it is one of the events that you know you know who is going to dominate who is going to win the mm-hmm. question is how many medals will Jamaica win you know it's it's normal for Jamaica to win upwards of 80 medals and so on and you expect them to do so again this time and remember the start champ stars sometimes don't turn up at the first game because there's a different qualifier for the first game they have a different championship qualifier for that over three days at the stadium so a number of names who you see uh, dominate a champ may not be there and some of those who did not dominate a champ feel see just one of those strange things but it doesn't stop Jamaica dominating and you expect them to do so again this year and then at the end back end of April they're going to be heading up to to you know to Philadelphia for for pen release um, you know at the Pennsylvania University of Pennsylvania that and that is going to be the world on the 20 championships um, I think it's going to be Kenya this year as well um, don't hold me to the country they're going to have that and most importantly a number of them believe that they can you know are ready for a shot at the Olympic team and so you're going to see them at the national championships um, competing so it's, it's going to be a long and busy year for a lot of them as it normally is but let's see how it goes Wayne Walker is the nationwide sports editor thank you so much Wayne thanks Wayne not a problem thanks for that good good Importers, the Jamaica Customs Agency is revolutionizing your clearance experience as our contactless clearance process becomes mandatory on April 2, 2024. This process will facilitate the clearance of all non-commercial personal shipments at our seaports with a CIF value of less than $5,000 being inspected by customs without you or your agent present. You're encouraged to make your payments using our customs mobile app, JA Customs Connect. Fees payable to your shipping agent and warehouse operator remain applicable. For further information, contact your freight forwarder or email Email contactless clearance at jca.gov.jm or call 876-922-5140-8. The JCA's contactless clearance process is convenient, efficient, and secure. Jamaica Customs, keeping our customers in focus. Go crazy for this offer from Flow. Get a free Samsung phone and earbuds when you sign up for Flow Yard and Road for the special price of $4,999 plus GCT. Free is all the craze. This crazy offer won't last long. Visit discoverflow.co or your nearest Flow store for more info. Conditions apply. Remember, every dream where you have, remember everything where you plan. With J and Bank, anything possible. With a little savings in your hand, save so you can. Build the house, buy the land. You have goals and dreams, make a plan. Save so you can. Living your best life and making memories is priceless. But saving little by little is what makes it affordable. Stop wishing you could. With your Jane Bank savings, you absolutely can. Jane Bank will help you find a way. It's 25. Thank you so much for staying with us. The numbers are 630-937-124. That's 630-937-124. Or digital line 618-8255. Good morning, Richie. Good morning, Marcel. Not hearing you, you know. Good Richie? Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Richie. What's up? No, I'm not hearing. I'm not no, Richie. can't hear Richie. I'm saying, when um, I'm next, 630-937-124, 618-8255. Richard, good morning. Good morning, Richard. Salamat pagi, gentlemen. I'm saying good morning in Indonesian. Ah. Um, I take a one star off of your show. You call it the big show. No, you lost the title in my book, you know, because of one guest that you carry on, which I think no ready is their prime time, you know. Um, now, I, I, I have been listening to the announcement about the hard program with getting young people to go in. And you guys don't tell us what is the criteria. Because if you if if there must be a criteria, maybe subjects or whatever, is, do you have to have any subject or what amount of subject? And that wasn't spelled out. I, f- I think it just the prime minister just said the the member of parliament was supposed to choose a thirty mm-hmm, from each constituency. From each constituency, but I, I I didn't hear another criteria. We could check for you. Yes, 
My other thing, a lot of our young people, when they go to the workplace, they have attitude and they're lazy. This is parental problem. Kids must grow up with shows and be taught to be industrious and to have work ethics from an early age. And for the, I just can't understand why parents are left alone. Parents must, must be pressured by the government and by institutions to let them know that you have to play a role and stop playing around. Because if you want a better Jamaica, parents must play a decent role to get their kids to a certain standard. Then society will do the rest. It's no. beyond me. No. I'm not these kids that spend most time on social media and no accountability by the parents. This, 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 this issue needs to be dealt with expeditiously. And my final point is so quickly. Next month, the first and next month, taxi fee is going to go up. I hear nobody putting information in place. How much? Because people are going to charge what they feel like I said they don't know. These things must put in place from now that when April 1 comes in, everything rolls smoothly. And instead of having the chaos. And I, and I blame the media also for not pushing this thing forward also. Because I don't think the people who worked at the... Um, the transport authority, they have much brains. So you guys have to be the brain for them. You don't think that's an undue burden, sir? Pardon me? You don't think that's an undue burden? No. Okay. Because you guys are the watchdog for the, for, for, for Austin. All right. I do agree that the people at the transport authority don't have any brain. But I hear you, Richard. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it. My pleasure, man. All right. 630-937-124-618-8255. Richie, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hear me clearly now? Yes. Hearing you clearly. I'm having a network problem since last week. Me too. But anyway, mm-hmm. um, that senator that you interviewed this morning, what's her name? Shereen Golden Campbell. Shereen, Shereen Golden Campbell. Yes. Well, if I didn't have a lawyer, I think I would think about her. <laughs> She's good. Yes. Anyway. She's very good. She's very good. Extremely good. Not very good. Extremely good. Um, in the Bible, God said, the devil is a liar. He's a liar from the beginning. He's speaking no truth. There's no truth in because him. Because he's speaking no truth because the truth is not in him. Am I going to talk to you now? No, uh, Richie. No, 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 no Richie. No, 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 Richie. No, 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 listen to me. Listen to me. Withdraw listen, that. Listen. Withdraw that, Richie. Okay, I withdraw it for, for the sake of, of my time. Anyway, again, the Bible. Talk about uh, will God give five uh, talent to one man and five up to another. There's the one with the one buried. And he give it to the one with the five. I... Look at that one man with the with the bat with the talent, one talent as the PMP party with Michael Mandel and, and PMP with with destroy the economy. I look on this government as the one that gets it because it give it which execute um this country to a point where um the America send advisory to his people not to come here because America know that this country will be taking away billions and billions and billions of more dollars in the country. I have good news to share anyway. Please. In last year, What's I went into news? a supermarket, you know what I bought? Yes. And a little girl, yes. a older high school student, mm-hmm. was in front of them to pick up just a piece of cheese. And I said to her, good afternoon, can you buy me a piece of cheese, please? She said, pick it up. I said, thanks, I'm just joking. You know the little girl who walked out of the line and wait until I come out and say, you want the cheese which I will buy for you now? I said, thanks. I'm, I'm just joking. I said, you're so generous. You know, after talking to the little girl, she's my very own. I have two daughters who migrated from Jamaica when they were teenagers. They are living in Canada over 30 years. And she's a, labor, she's a neighbor to the grandmother. After I talked to her, it's like she mentioned not giving the, my children name. But anyway. Richie? No. So, sorry about that, Richie. 630 Elaine, good morning. Good morning, Hi, good morning, Elaine. Saeed and Ricardo. Hi, Elaine. How you doing? Hey. You know, Ricardo, I was sitting here listening this morning. And when I hear, when I hear if you're going to leave in the big show, I a big sum just drop down on my stomach, you know, Ricardo. <laughs> so, do you tell me you're going to go in and I'm going to go in and at five. I said, all right. Anywhere you go, I will be there with you. I'm happy to hear that. Oh, my. I <laughs> Mr. Lange, Ricardo, leave nationwide now? No, no. Oh, my. I'm going to nationwide at five. The smaller, yes, you know. the smaller show. The smaller show. Smaller show. Then why hear me? When I go there, they get me. All right. Yeah, man. 
Yeah, but you know, I used to Mr. Um, who coming on the morning show, Mr. Um, George Davis. Yeah, George, yeah. My used to, man. Yes. All right, take care. All right, Elaine. Take Thanks care, for the yeah. call. 630-937-124-618-8255. Alric. Good morning, Alric. Good morning, Ricardo. Morning, sir. Good morning, morning, sir. Boy, Ricardo, boy, me, me feel like the same way like the lady when me hear you first. Call me and say, I want to go on a nationwide, but when me hear you say, you yeah, come from this 5 o'clock news thing now, I say, all right. But the thing is, Said is there. Yes. And the big show must go on because, you, you know, I get in trouble with certain people all the while by saying your show is the big show. Yes. Yes, so, I still have to say it, but it's going to be big same way. Of course. Uh, Said is there. And, w- and the exuberant George. A uh, one big show and a never two. <laughs> that is, that right. <laughs> By the way, Ricardo. Yes. I should let you know, you know, I hear you guys discussing all along this ruling by the Privy Council. Mm-hmm. When in a little chat with Saeed last year, he told me that that was what was going to happen, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's what we, we, we reasoned. We yeah, figured it was the most likely so, outcome. So I am giving him his props because that's exactly what he told me was going to happen before the decision came and that was what happened. Mm. Respect, man. So, you know, with him on the big show, it will still be the big show because his big views will still be on. <laughs> well, right, I, so. I, you know, listen, you see, as soon as it, it, it strikes midnight yes. on... What is it? Monday, April one. Yeah. You're not gonna hear me ever say again that this is the big show. Really? Because <laughs> Nisha was at five. <laughs> Suddenly they come the biggest show. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, April one, midnight. Lock off his mic. Lock off his mic. April one. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we have to lock off his mic, Alvin. <laughs> at midnight, April one, <laughs> the allegiance is a shift. <laughs> Look here, Ricardo, you have to hear in your stripes when you go there. <laughs> when I go to the big, when I go to Nisha, when I five? I can't you call it big show yet. <laughs> so you have, you have to earn your stripes before me say that. This show will be the big show for me until you... So wait, so you, don't, so you don't think Nisha, when I five, big already? You one can go up, they're going to make it big. <laughs> that, that Cliff is worth it, though. Know? It's a combination of you and Said and Tana make it big. I see. <laughs> Right. So you are one turn and I and I am so coming you. and I am coming from nationwide at five. <laughs> All right, boss. Um, say, 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 go, Alvik. Uh, yes, here's one thing I want to discuss with you. Yes. I listened to the senator this morning, mm-hmm. and I am wondering if before you leave tomorrow, man, you can get the leader at your position because what the senator has been saying, you know, it rings a bell. Show me proof that we have violated. Bring the clause to show section why that, 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 that. Yes, I think that's a fear. I think that's a fear, a fear called by the senator. Because look why it is, why I think it is a fear call. And the average, you know, a learned lawyer, Mr. Buchanan said a couple of months ago that he said he made a certain statement because the Jamaican people, you have to, if you don't talk to them that way, they do not understand. We say shelve and run them away with. No, this these class things and these laws and so it is said that which I, I beat down that lie that most Jamaicans don't read. Oh, you think that's so you, you think that's not true? You think it's up to the legislators and you guys to break it down in simple Jamaican language so that all of us can understand and pick sense out of nonsense. Mm. Now that we have already said from a JLP senator. I think we should also hear the side from a PNP senator and to, to come and prove that section, that class, that whatever you want to say, says that so we can know who is really speaking the truth and it or is just a political thing that, that they want to create the politics and to create this a political point. We can't afford to let the political points diminish what is happening in the country. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right, it's a, it's a it's a um it's a it's a fear called by the senate and I agree with her. Yeah. All right, then. So All right, yeah, man. You guys have a good day. You too. All right, and sad to see you leave the morning show, but just join me, just join me, just join me five o'clock on Nisha when at five, man. <laughs> All right, so All you, right, you, you, you didn't have to wake up early again. <laughs> that, if that is me, be where you want. <laughs> 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 I would love to take all my listeners with me, yes. Yeah, but I'll miss you guys. We had some nice chat on the program. 
you know, can't call me some way like five because they don't want to call you over there. <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah, but we can't, we can't, we can't discuss certain things over there because oh. you were the guys who, who, who do the heavy lifting early morning with some of the people. Well, that is early. true. That is true. That is true. Uh, all right, guys. All right, yeah, man. Take care. Yeah. Right. yeah, man. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. Take care. We have the expertise for drilling and demolition We have the power tools for plumbers and electrician Pan select tools, free parts and free repairs Free parts, free repairs Three, two to three years Hilton, available at Delta Supply 106 Hagley Park Road Call us at 876-302-61124 Delta Supply, we service what we sell Start your fitness goals with Express Fitness. Sign up today and restart your fitness journey at an Express Fitness location near you. Enjoy safe, comfortable, and well-equipped gyms from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. daily. Call 554-5180 for a full listing of our open locations. Express Fitness. Express Fitness. Your goal. Our mission. Who loans a linear 500 grand? We buy appliances and electrons. All flexible, payment plan. Yeah, man, a hot cash. Hot, hot. I hope to 500 grand. Yeah, man, a hot cash. Half million that make you rich fast. 100 grand for buy steel and black. 200 for furniture, laptop. 200 for keep birthday bash. Yeah, man, a loan hot. Uh. Get a cool loan to purchase all your electronics, furnitures, and appliances at coolmarket.com. Eight thirty nine. Good morning, Marie. Morning, the books. Good morning. You give the mother too much time, pani pani call, you know. Who that? Alric. Yes, man. All right, mami gia, mami gia. The only citizen here. All right, mami gia, good run. Go on with it. Um, I agree with the caller before that spoke about holding parents accountable. Yes. In line with the heart situation, because all these children that are on the road, they belong somewhere. They live somewhere, mm -hmm. and somebody gave birth to them. Yes. And if they don't have no father, for the most part, they have mothers. And so, it, and we know that there's going to be a pushback with these children who don't know how to work, don't know how to hold themselves accountable to time or anything. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to go into the heart space, and this thing needs to work. But remember, so, you know, Re mm -hmm. uh, sorry for interrupting, but remember that's also part of the program right. because the Prime Minister did say for some of them, they may already have the skills, but it's the work ethic that needs uh, uh, to, to be worked on. So the program will provide that opportunity as well. So, so it, it need, we need to know how, how, it's going to, how it's going to work. Yeah. Because remember, these children were out there for whatever reason. It's not just the money. Mm -hmm. Why they weren't going to school or weren't doing anything. Mm -hmm. Some of them just can't work with anybody because they're not here. Uh. Most of these children were on the streets drinking that peepy looking thing and smoking weed. Then they, their ears doesn't work. Right? They just do what they feel. So now they're going to go into a system that needs to be managed. They need to be managed too, so somebody needs to hold into a higher standard and it's going to be the parents. Mm -hmm. Or else they're going to end up back on the road or end up back at home and the parents still feeding them. They are doing that now. They are enabling them now for the most part. And so they, they will feel that I don't need to do this. I can go back home then. Mm -hmm. So it, it has to be that it is, it is so put together that... They're working closely with whomever these children, they don't live by themselves. They don't have any money. They don't own a house. So I, want, I don't want to hear or see them coming back out on the road mm -hmm. and not becoming, making anything good of themselves, yeah. especially the fact that most of them are boys. You know, yeah. even the, the windshield wipers, you know, I was thinking about it uh, mm. over the weekend, Ricardo. All of the windshield wipers, you know, they're supposed to take them off of the road and say, come. You need to go to heart, NSTA. 
that's that's you're getting money to go to heart you know it's mm. almost like a job you know so the money that you try and hustle up on, on the in the, the, the road to uh, like when and that and was my people, point exactly go to heart this, this young man was was trying to wipe my windshield for fifty dollars mm -hmm. and i'm saying you are going to be getting much more than this plus plus a skill Mm. To become something, but they for don't. The rest but they don't have life. a vision for but themselves. But my understanding, then, you know, the my understanding that in some of those cases, you know, some of those boys who are out there are not out there on their own, of their own free will, mm -hmm. but rather have been sent out there sometimes by community dons mm -hmm. and and that kind of a thing. Um, All right. But but no, yeah, you're right. That's a way and, of, of and, making and, them and productive. And this is where this is where the government, whatever is saying, needs to work. Mm -hmm. okay. They are going to have to interface with the done or them are the police. Mm -hmm. But no, there has to be something to bridge so that these things don't work as they are working now. Yeah, I agree. They are sending them out there. Somebody else needs to send them because after the done, use them and dash them. Where they come back mm -hmm. into my pocket yes. and into your pocket, yes. and and they are out there. And every time you drive, this the, the, the country looks like it's not working. Mm -hmm. There are too many of them that are free, and in no time they are going to be able to be used by somebody else look at haiti where you think they get so much little man running around with guns mm -hmm. these children were not attached to anywhere mm -hmm. and so anybody come and promise them or, or take them on whether you rule them by force or not they had them mm -hmm. so now if we women can't manage our children we should have them and if we have them and we can't send them to school for the most part and we're getting help we still have to be able to say okay it's my child so if they are not if they are not hearing or they are not going to to to, to appreciate the help me go help them to appreciate it or they find another way out whether in the army or however it is but it cannot be that the system looks so much that it's not working you said where are all these children coming from you said something a while ago that i want you to repeat which is that if you can't afford the children then you should take the necessary precautions not to have them. I agree with that. And I don't think we talk about that enough, about proper planning, no, planning no. Um, and family planning. And, and I, it, it, it amazes me how irresponsible women are. It amazes me, Ricardo. Them there with one man and them have to breathe for the man because um, it's a statement, it's a fashion statement. We give my youth. It's foolishness. Mm. It's foolishness. Or as I and hear, or as I hear it now, once you reach, once you reach a particular age, you forget a youth. Now them tell Said, you forget a youth now. Boy. And and the reason for that is because they don't care how they eat, yeah. how they how they become um healthy, mm -hmm. or how they go to school, yeah. or if they're mad, or if they sleep on the road after they have them done. That's it. Mm -hmm. So it, it, this, it goes way back, and so I don't know the councillors, the, 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 the people in government who, who, who have the department of psychology or whatever, but we need to understand why why things are the way they are. Mm -hmm. you, you look over in America, the, the, the guys who are shooting down each other and selling weed, mm -hmm. they come from the, 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 the poorer part of the, of the country, and like night for a day, that is what they are going to do. It's like that's what they are born to do. It cannot be. And if they can do that, can't they go and make clothes like the whole of China and, and plant rice and everything and sell it so that at least you have money if you look after them then? Marie, you're preaching this morning. You're, you're, you're facts on facts on facts. You're preaching this morning. We're going to have to, we're we're gonna have to use the willpower to do it. We're going to need the willpower to do it. But I agree right, with you. you know? so I agree with you that like it starts with proper parenting. Said, yeah, man. And just say that in our world for one extreme. Meaning that if him win, him win, but mm -hmm. not leave a legacy. Right. That look here, I am standing up for these children, mm -hmm. these people. That is either they produce one way or the other. Exactly. But, and and by extension, their family that they belong to have to get them off the road. Mm -hmm. If they are not going to heart or they are not working and they are not doing other things, the option cannot be government road or or the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Why, Marie? Want to see them out there? Somebody yeah. must cancel. Why am I out here? Right. And 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 a fifteen minutes a day, you're entitled to to be on the road and get some breeze and bun one weed if you want to eat. All but right. otherwise, you must be productive. All right, Outside Marie. Outside that, your mother or your father, somebody must be able to help government to keep you off the road and make you do something else. All right, Marie. <laughs> Appreciate the call. Appreciate the contribution. All right.
good good i see i see them asking me if when i go to nationwide at five i'll play music on a friday apparently that has become a state yeah yeah i forgot to sing like george and dance on a and friday. steve mcdonald says i trust turner will make ricardo sign an nda so that he doesn't go over there and disclose any big team secrets makes sense that's a good suggestion <laughs> i'll do the drafting i already <laughs> leaked the whole secret them already oh wow <laughs> oh wow <laughs> up next your birthdays Just a one slice, please. No other bun, perfect for me. Yummy for real Jamaican flavor and quality for sure. This Easter, make yummy the bun to your cheese. Yummy, give me yummy, yummy, give me yummy. For Easter, yummy bun zita, yummy for me family, yummy for me sir. Bun to me cheese, bun to me cheese, give me yummy. Bun to me cheese, bun to me cheese, best bun. Give me yummy. Hello, yes dear. What is a call? But tell them get the thing. Nothing says Happy Easter like an Alliance MoneyGram money transfer. I'm gonna get something so sweet with it. Pick up your Alliance MoneyGram money transfer of US $150 or more from March 18 to March 28th and get an Easter bun and cheese while stocks last at select locations. Happy Easter to you too! Remember, head to the sweetest location to pick up your MoneyGram money transfer this Easter. A member of the Sajiko Group. When your legs don't work like they used to before And I can't sweep you off of your feet Will your mouth still remember the taste of my love? Will your eyes still smile from your cheek? Darling, I will be loving you till we're 70 Baby, my heart could still fall as hard at 23 And I'm thinking about how people fall in love in mysterious ways Maybe just the touch of a hand Well, me, I fall in love with you every single day So honey now Take me into your loving arms Kiss me under the light of a thousand stars Place your head on my beating heart I'm thinking out loud Maybe we found love I must tell hello to Miss Daphne and Uncle Ralph. This song is for you. When my hair's all but gone and my memory fades, and the crowds don't remember my name. When my hands don't play strings the same way, mm, I know you will still love me the same. Cause none of your soul. Who could never grow? Oh, it's evergreen. Please, let's read the birthdays because I have something else to do after the birthdays. So, I have use the time. Baby, oh, happy birthday to Kelia Henry. Uh, happy birthday from Tana Thomas. With everything going on, I need to let her know that she's loved. Wishing her a wonderful birthday. Happy birthday, Kelia Henry. Those and meetings. I know how that go. I know how it go. For me, Tana Thomas. So, it's actually from Joan Forrest Henry to her daughter. Yeah. Happy birthday to you, Kayla Henry. We're wishing you a very happy birthday oh. with everything going on. Mommy says, need to let you know that you're loved. Ah, Wishing you a wonderful birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Happy birthday, shout out to Dwight Taylor, a.k.a. Dino, from his goddaughter, Kelia Henry. Happy, happy birthday. So, yes, both godfather and goddaughter share a birthday. Happy, happy birthday. And, of course, happy birthday to the Auditor General, Pamela Monroe Ellis. Those greetings are coming from the Liming Peeps. 
birthday greetings going out to this person says my aunt Eileen Wright Hansen originally of Chudley Path Walderston in Manchester and her daughter Katie and Johnson Jacobs both living in Florida in the United States they're celebrating their birthday today March 25 wishing them loads of blessing happiness and good health greetings coming from the entire Wright family all the siblings nieces nephews and cousins especially Donetta and family enjoy your extra special day and beyond yeah. blessings always so those are it for the birthdays you know see facebook people in. oh and andrea <laughs> <laughs> tashika kadisha walker cc collins sakira tate and marie wilson happy happy birthday to you all really hoping you have an amazing day kiss me under the light of a thousand stars oh darling place your head on my beating heart Loving can hurt Loving can hurt sometimes But it's the only thing that I know When it gets hard You know it can get hard sometimes It is the only thing Makes us feel alive We keep this love in a photograph We make these memories for ourselves Where our eyes are never closing Hearts are never broken Time's forever frozen still So you can keep me Inside the pocket of your wit Jeans holding me closer to the eyes. So what? You never, never, never be alone. Wait for me to come home. Big show. Loving can heal. Marigold say, Oh, it's a good morning, Marigold. Loving can make. But you always put that up and it kills me, you know. Good morning, Marigold. <laughs> like the man talked to the guy in a different voice, you know. Ah. Eight anyways, 54. Anyways, Ricardo. Yes, sir. Um, this is my last show with you. It is my last, my very last show with you. And I uh, just want to publicly tell you thanks for my just started when I just came to Nationwide. I was on Nationwide this morning and Nationwide at five, struggling both shows, trying to find my feet and, you know, y- you know how hard it was, yeah? and struggling to come here in the mornings and being grumpy about it uh the harsh criticisms sometimes you know sometimes i thought ricardo hated me (laughs) Uh, sometimes he gave me some very harsh criticisms and i'd get some text messages with some seriously and just ripping me to pieces but i think i've been all the better for it and so to our big brother you know you've been here for me you've helped me to settle in here very well been fully now on Nationwide this morning and it's always been a pleasure I look forward to my Fridays to have bro Fridays and I hope that perhaps George <laughs> can continue that but bro wherever you go whatever you do you know I'm I'm here supporting you and you make it so and I will definitely <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely miss you no it's not that it's just that I you really helped me to find my footing you know and you know how hard it was especially with these youtubers <laughs> yeah with these people who vilify your day in day out you know how hard it was yes and you stuck there by me you supported me and you helped me along thank you bro you're welcome and i hope that i can continue to make you proud here you always made me proud and side. As, and from you were in third form <laughs> shouting at me across the debate <laughs> stage you always made me proud well and as i've always said and george may take your seat but he will never take your place yeah okay.
that's all the time we have this morning. So I think y'all got this morning, you know. <laughs> All the stuff this morning, you know. I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna play. You gotta get those scary. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna call it to you. You know, I'm gonna. I wish I could just make you turn around, turn around and see me cry. There's so much I need to say to you. So many things I want. Michelle McRae Smith. Jermaine King, Cara Powell, George Davis, Tana Thomas, Said Bernard. All I know, my love of the whole heap. We have two more shows though, two more times. <laughs> two more, I'll be here two more times. Yeah. yeah, and then I will graduate to Nationwide at 5. As people are asking what's happening. Um, I'm, I'm leaving Nationwide this morning. I'll start hosting Nationwide at 5 next week, April 1. Yep, so that's all the time we have this morning. Mr. Yeah. Noah, ready? To be at your service, Miss Nora. Let them call her now, Miss Nora. Nora. And and when they see her and they realize, oh, young, she's their surprise. Yeah, yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. Especially when we go country, yeah, them say, me, they, talk to Miss Nora. Miss Nora. Nora. Like, you know, Miss Nora is around my age, right? Look <laughs> <laughs> up yourself, Miss Nora. But Miss Nora is ready to be at your service, and then at ten, Cliff Hughes will be online. I'm Ricardo Brooks. I'm Said Bernard. Good morning. Good morning. Just heard Nationwide this morning on Nationwide 90 FM. And fair nationwide 90 FM. <laughs>